If you want to see the stars of the future, then look no further because this is where it's at. 17 nations, 150 competitors, three sports. It's the 2018 FEI European Championships for Ponies at Bishop Burton College. Welcome to Bishop Burton College for the FEI Pony European Championships 2018. It's cross-country day here at Bishop Burton College and all eyes now firmly focused on the cross-country course that is set out there in front of the uh, big house here and there's uh, some really challenging questions out there and uh, we start with the first horse out on cross-country at 2 o'clock British summer time. It's been a really interesting competition so far here at Bishop Burton for the 2018 FEI Pony European Championships. Of course, the uh, defending champions, French, are uh, the French team that won in Kapsavar in Hungary last year, are here along with the team from Great Britain, silver medalists from Kapsavar in Hungary, Safi Osborne is uh, here as uh, part of that team with Connie Gill, Irish team in uh, bronze medal with uh, just one member of that team, Isabel Comerford, in uh, the Irish team. Well, it's going to be very exciting. Safi Osborne, individual silver medalist from last year's European Championships. The uh, German team out in front. They're very strong, the German team here this year. Well, I'm delighted to say that not only myself, but it will be uh, Kate Walls commentating on the cross country. Hi, Kate. Hi, Spencer. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to an exciting afternoon. Well, we had... Uh, Two days of dressage and we look back to the highlights of the dressage and the first we see is for Great Britain, Safi Creswell, Saffron Creswell with uh, the wonderful little, little Indian feather for Great Britain. She was individual silver medalist from the Europeans in 2017, trained by Alex Franklin along with the uh, team. She does uh, such a great job. Father Jamie Osborne, racehorse trainer. So you see the leader score at this stage, 35. Safi on 30.0. The best uh, of the Brits, Safi Creswell on uh, 28.0 that was her score lying in fifth place but the German dominance here at the Pony European Championships they lie in first second and third in the team with uh, one drop score at the moment Helena Bodeman Eva Longstan the uh, horse she rode but keeping her cool in the arena on Creswell Indian Feather, very experienced combination now. Those team standings, we'll bring you those team standings in a short while. Very relaxed test that she rose. Prone to the odd tense moment, but little Indian Feather stayed very composed in the arena. Just a bit of time to establish the walk in that transition. I was stood with Alex Franklin at the entrance to the Championship Arena along with uh, Rodney Powell. They were on the whole very thrilled, very pleased with this test. Concord Hemming does such a fantastic job as well, part of uh, Team GBR. Very relaxed walk, just a slight lapse in concentration coming back from that walk into the collected walk. 28.0 but the leading German rider it is uh, 
Jana Lemkil with uh, Vyth 14. Runaway test, they had 24.6 in the dressage. Very close at the top, and it's not going to be a dressage competition, that is certain. There's a lot of questions out there on the cross country course. But this was a very, very smart test indeed. The Germans are so strong. As I said, the three team members lying first, second and third, respectively, after the dressage phase. Emily Roberg, 26.1. Maximum Holmer, 26.4. So keeping, again, keeping their cool. Pack stands, real atmosphere down there in the championship arena. But they come very early on in the cross country. They will be seventh out on course. So with the test of uh, Saffron Creswell and uh, the German leader, Jana Lemkel. We see the whole test that they rode. A lovely halt to finish for that score of 24.6. Very pleased with the little Vyth 14. Well, a beautiful day here at Bishop Burton. Bishop Burton College for the FEI Pony European Championships 2018. As I mentioned earlier, the first pony out on course will be at uh, 2 o'clock in uh, just uh, under 10 minutes' time. We go to uh, the start list for the cross-country phase. The first horse out will be for Denmark, anna Sophia Lingard-Zeltner. Then Italy, Giovanna Bolfaglia. Italy uh, with uh, four members, Isabel Comerford for Ireland, member of the team last year, Colour Me Fancy. Great Britain's Ellie Healy will be a first for Great Britain. Michelle Swinkles, Mina Sai, Jana Lemkel, the uh, leader after dressage, seventh out with Anne Van Jack, Georgia King, dropped the subject for Great Britain, and uh, Lulu uh, Dushtang for France. Moving further down, the uh, Start list, Luna Richter, Luana Palmquist, Holly Love for Ireland, Hattie Grace, Noble Superman for Great Britain, Elise Otto for the Netherlands, Helena Bottoman for Germany, and Bo Goman for Belgium, Martina Guerra for Italy Olympic lad, Connie Gill for Great Britain, movie star the second, Elena Datti, Ellis uh, Westermark, Harry Swan, Safi Osborne, Little Indian Feather for Great Britain. But the dressage score is very, very close indeed. And the uh, new scoring system without the coefficient means that it's very tight at the top. Maxima Homer, 26.4, but uh, not many tests uh, in the 40s, mainly in the 30s, low 30s and late 30s. Camilla Luciana for Italy. And Chloe Fagan for Ireland in the uh, last few to go for Ireland. And then we look down to the final few. Daisy Proctor, Holiday Chase. Lisa Gualtieri uh, for France. Omar Du Carasadel. Emily Roberg, Sandro 406. And the last to go, Baptiste Batillon and uh, Hadgar. The uh, cross-country course is uh, set with uh, a really challenging course out there. They start, it's a distance of 3,500 metres, travelling at 520 metres per minute. That optimum time, 6 minutes and 44 seconds. Every second over the optimum time, incurring 0.4 of a time penalty. That added to their dressage score, and we're looking for the lowest score overall that will be the leaders. Of course, individual medals and team medals up for offer. And it's the lowest penalty score. These are penalty marks, and we're looking for the lowest of those, and we'll keep you up to date with those running scores as uh, we get them to hand throughout the day. Well, they start off over the first, the uh, nice, uh, inviting Bishop Burton flower box at one, onto the uh, brush roll at two, 
The first combination comes early at 3A and 3B. The uh, York Racecourse Park Step. Two strides between the uh, step and the uh, rail. Away from that second fence. We go to that first combination fence. They disappear through the trees over the second to the step down. That rail and a step down with uh, two strides in between the elements. We may see the one. It depends how bold they are going to the third. They'll be full of running and full of adrenaline. On to the agri-diamond ditch. The riders have the option to jump either left or right of that uh, corner type fence. That is fence three. So fence three, the uh, rail and the step down. Onto the Agri Diamond Ditch. Onto this, uh, this uh, Agri Diamond Ditch at the bottom of the hill. They go then through the woods onto the Adamson and Sun White Rails at uh, five. When they've disappeared through the trees, they disappear through the trees and uh, on to the first of the water fences at 6A, B and C. The Bishop Burton Flight Pond at 6. There's those uh, rails coming to the first of the uh, waters. It is uh, the Bishop Burton Flight Pond then disappearing to the dreary electrical interspace. Onto the jury electrical interspace. So this drop fence at seven moves them on to the Bishop Burton pencils left handed to the Bishop Burton pencils. There they are, the uh, blue pencils. On to now nine and ten. This is a really big question. At 9 and 10, the Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners. Six strides, we think, in between there. Maybe seven, depending on how they jump the first of those corners. Left-handed corner dropping downhill to the uh, corner combination. From uh, there they go to the Dodson and Horrell one, two, Park. One, two, at 11. one, two, three. One, two, that, three. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. Table, on to the Bishop Burton well, Cordwood Stacks at uh, 12 A and B. Left-handed turn with, between the two. Nine strides on the left-handed curve. Moving back towards the water. They go to the bounce. This is the first out on course now. A really quick move away from the first fence. It is uh, Anna Sophia Lingard, Zeltner for Denmark. Well, she's riding... Uh, Scared Owls, uh, Annabelle. Bring forward a dressage of uh, 40.6. Coming to that first combination at three. Well, just gets the two strides, Kate. We thought some might go on one. She was very quickly through there. Yeah, she was. She's really riding positively and she's going for it, isn't she? That optimum time, remember, six minutes and 44 seconds. Every second over incurring 0.4 of a time penalty. Going uh, through the trees onto the fourth fence here, out on course. It's the Agri Diamond uh, Ditch. Galloping through the trees, and it's a very big climb up through the trees. You walked it this morning. I ran it with uh, Lizzie Greenwood Hughes the other day. It's a long uh, pull up through the trees to this FG Adamson and some white rails at five. On the MIM clip, you can see the MIM clip on the on the uh, pin on the back rail. A bit of a drop on the landing. Before the first now, the water complexes at 6A BC. The Bishop Burton flight pond over the shotgun. Lands into water. Pecks on landing a little bit. Just sticks in the saddle. Out over the, uh, the bird's nest. Onto the jury electrical interspace. Taking that left-handed route. An enormous drop on the landing. We thought many would take that left-handed route. Yeah, I don't think you'll see many take the right-handed route at all. Um, I suppose the only difference really there is that the drop on the left is so much more than on the right. Well, a lovely jump there at the Bishop Burton Pencils at 8. Now moving on to the Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners at 9 and 10. This is one of the fences we thought would be quite influential. They move uh, uphill and then turn slightly 
left-handed and it looks like she may be taking the slightly longer route. Yeah, I, she's, she's playing safe here, but uh, probably sensibly so if she's just struggling a little bit with the brakes. So taking the longer route. Jumps that right-handed corner, gallops away from the Hobson and Porter terrace corners and onto the Dodson and Horrell Park picnic table at 11. And as Sophia Lingard Zeltner, Squadded Owls at Annabelle. They gallop towards the Bishop Burton Cordwood stacks at a 12 AMB. Jump the first of them just out of sight. Then nine strides on the curve, left handed curve to the second of those Cordwood stacks. And she actually got 11 strides in there, so she was um, she's really playing it safe around that turn. Yeah, the uh, time taken there, 3 minutes 33. It'll be interesting to keep a, an eye on the clock for the first combination to see how it's going to pan out. Up to this bounce, it's the bounce up. Oh, we thought some might do that. They come up the hill expecting them just to back themselves off. It's the spirit level on the top of the hill. They got very close, jumped right to the bottom of that spirit level. Yeah, she came with a little bit too much speed there. She didn't really get the pony back and, and balance it before she kicked it up the step. And it is incredibly short from that bounce to the rail. Well, onto the basics table, then the CR Reynolds Road crossing at 15A and 15B. They've got uh, 2 minutes 56 to get home. Jumping through that road crossing at 15A and B, onto the Bed Max Beach Log at 16. She seems to have upped the pace again now. Yeah, and, and, and then that's great because, you know, she's really motoring home. She's taken that long route earlier on in the course to play safe, and now she's she's trying to get home clear inside the time. Well, on to the Bed Max Beach Log at 16. As they come back through the trees to the Rainbow Equine Hospital Trocana at 17. Pretty big ditch underneath this trocana, but should pose no problems to these FEI European ponies. Yeah, she's jumped a few ditches now already, so the pony didn't even look look once, did he? Well, on to the TES Home Care Limited uh, Lake. The Black Flag alternative there as well at 18A, B and C, right underneath the college house. So at the water, taking the direct loop by the look of it. Wow, really positive riding. I think she may have had a run out there. Yeah, annoyingly we can't actually see what happened there with the tree being in the way, but um, I, I'm presuming the pony just uh, lost focus on what he was jumping and, and just nipped out at that triple yeah, brush. coming for a second attempt. That is uh, clear on their second attempt, but it will be 20 penalties for the first out on course. You know, and sometimes that's the penalty that you pay when you're chasing the time. You know, you lose a little bit of the control that you need in these difficult combinations. Yeah, we thought that might happen exactly how you said. And one of those combinations is coming up right towards the end of the course. You know, it, it, it's a couple of straightforward fences now. The... The uh, hay cart at 19, the hanging flower tray at uh, 20 brings them back into the home staff finish field as she uh, makes her way back towards the hanging flower tray at uh, 20 and the fence with the ditch uh, underneath. Long climb uphill towards this fence. Well, they come through the trees and this is the next really big question. It's the AJW Equestrian Truck Brushes She's got 20 seconds to get home, so even with that 20 penalty, she's not going to be too far off of that time, but she's no, taking she's the going. longer route here. I think that's really sensible. She's had the early run out. She wants to get home with no more penalties, and I think she's just lost a little bit of the control that she's needed because she's been going so fast. Yeah, looking a little bit tired, isn't he, coming back towards home. She's already over the time. You can see the time penalties clocking up. She's now on uh, 20... 20 jumping penalties, at the moment 4.8 time penalties. So crossing the line, our first is home, it is 20 jumping and uh, we'll get the time. 
Well, this is uh, second out on course for Italy. It is Giovanni Bol Bolafio with uh, Dom Alga Noor. Dress size of 37.2. Well, this is the second combination to take that longer route. Kate, we walked it. I thought that more would take, but we may see that later on. Yeah, I think so. I think I think as uh, the penalties perhaps come in, you'll you might see some riders that are actually hoping to get an, an individual medal. That they'll they'll take the chance and actually jump that straight route. Well, Giovanna Bolafio and uh, Dramal Ganor making their way away from the uh, corner combination and the Dodson and Horrell table. They go to the Bishop Burton Cordwood Stacks. Giovanna Bolafio, Jomalga Noor now comes downhill towards the Kitchen Civil's European spirit level. Uphill they climb to this. Yeah, that was much better. Yeah, that was really nicely ridden. She actually just balanced the horse before she then rode it forward up the step. Well, our latest starter away from the start for Ireland, Isabel Comerford and Colour Me Fancy. They start on 31.3 in 11th place overnight after two days of dressage. <coughs> well, enormous jump across that road crossing. That is not Isabel Comerford. It is the uh, Italian rider Giovanna Bolafio and uh, Dramalga Noor. And she doesn't look like she's wasting any time at all there. She's moving really nice and forwardly up the hill. Well, a great shot of the second water as Isabella Comerford, Call Me Fancy, comes to the first of the waters over the shotgun, eyes up this narrow bird's nest, jumps out well over that. Well, the course designer here, Adrian Ditcham and his team, British Eventing and uh, three and four star FEI course designer, working uh, throughout the UK, Adrian. Isabel Comerford, colour me fancy at the Bishop Burton pencils at eight. And at the second water, Giovanni. Lafio Dramalga Noor. <coughs> well, clear through that combination. They took the direct route, carrying Wilbury Wonder Pony on uh, the back. Wilbury Wonder Pony, the chosen charity here at the Pony European Championships. looks like she may have taken the straight route there. Yeah, I think she did, because um, we would have seen her actually circling had she not. But uh, she's looking like she's full of running and really positive. Isabel Comerford, come on me fancy, goes up to the cordwood stacks. So coming to those two cordwood stacks on the left-handed curving stride. The majority have gone on more than nine, haven't they? I mean, it's yeah, they have. They're really making it, they're breaking the fence up. They're making it uh, two separate fences rather than actually riding it as a, as a curving line. Well, there's the first of the uh, British on course, Ellie Healy, Midnight Dancer, part of the British team. She lies in sixth place after dressage on 28.1. Really good dressage score, really handy score for the British team. The British team currently lying in silver medal position on 87.5. The Germans on 77.1. But uh, France are in uh, bronze medal position at the moment. They're defending champions, France, as Ellie Healy with uh, Midnight Dancer gallops on very quickly, I have to say. <laughs> I don't know whether she's got much control. Yeah, she is, and she was just testing her brakes there before she came to the next fence. Well, just completing their uh, course is Giovanni Bolafio for Italy, team rider for Italy, Dramalga Noor. 37.2, they had four time penalties, 41.2 is uh, their three-phase score, 10 seconds over the time.
Well, this now will be Ellie Healy and Midnight Dancer jumping out over those white rails. Well, then at five and on to the first of the waters, six ABC. Lovely jump at the uh, bird's nest. Quickly sets up for these drop rails. And he makes nothing of that at all. And she's just going to let him run down the hill now to the next fence. Lovely shot to those pencils. Ellie Healy, Midnight Dancer, now makes their way and it looks like they're taking the quick route. This will be interesting because this will be the first time we've seen this combination jumps in a hole. Ellie Healy, Midnight Dancer, turns right-handed. Lovely jump at the left-handed corner, balances downhill. Gets quite close to the second of those corners, but it makes light work of it. Yeah, he did, and he jumped that really well. I mean, you'll see there that the uh, the pony had to go from light to dark. So, you know, they see that, that corner at the very last minute, and he was really genuine there to jump it and keep keep coming straight. Well, she keeps adjusting her hats. A lot of uh, up and uphill down Dale past this course. Great use of the topography here at Bishop Burton College. This is the FEI. European Championships for Ponies, but a refusal, a run out at the second of those cordwood stacks for Ellie Healy and Midnight Dancer. 20 jumping penalties. Oh, she'll be really cross with that because, you know, that was just a really unfortunate mistake to happen. I think perhaps he just lost a bit of rhythm and balance on the turn and just didn't quite see what he was having to jump next. Yeah, that was really, unfor really, really unfortunate because it wouldn't be a fence that I would think would cause many problems. No, it wouldn't, but, you know, there, there is actually an owl that is... Uh, um, parked right next to that fence so maybe that just took his eye off what he was supposed to be doing and perhaps he spooked so it took her off her line well latest starter this is for the Netherlands Michelle Swinkles and Snow they start on 40.2 40.2 their dressage score starting out very fast yeah they are and you know I think they just need to be careful that they're not going to then lose control further on where they need to actually get these ponies focused and, and really thinking about the, the accuracy that they've got to ride through these difficult fences <coughs> crossing over the road Ellie Hilly, Midnight Dancer, gallops away from the C.R. Reynolds Road crossing onto the Bed Max Beach Log at 16. They have already picked up those 22 penalties at the Cordwood Stacks. Well, out of the four riders, we've had two riders with 20 penalties. At the first of those waters now, we shall swing calls for the Netherlands and uh, Snow. Yeah, and she's really meaning business, isn't she? I mean, uh, I I'm surprised at the speed she came at that, but she just doesn't seem to mind. And that's the price you pay, you know, with speed and drop fences. The pony was very lucky not to fall, and she, she did well to keep upright. Yeah, she looks like she's got a fair bit of iron in this pony's mouth, but they're going, I, I would say, a little bit too quickly across yeah, the country. Yeah, I, I think so as well. You know, she just needs to be careful, like, like we've just said, that actually the undulations don't make the pony um, trip and... Uh, lose balance. Well, Ellie Healy for Great Britain and Midnight Dancer down to the second of those waters. Looks like she's taking the direct route three strides and now this very narrow fence coming out of the water. Great uh, if we could see that fence but it's behind the trees. Yeah, but she made light work of that, didn't she? She just popped through there beautifully like it was an exercise in the school at home. Yeah, I hope she just um, gets a little bit more control back and uh, gets the pony listening to her a little bit more. I don't think that was in the plan. No, I don't think it was. I think, it, I mean, looking quite strong, this pony across the country and uh, very brave. And sometimes they can run themselves into trouble being brave. Yeah, they do. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens coming up this step to the rail because she really does need to get him back. So he, uh, he's listening. Let's see what happens. Oh, yes, unfortunately that was going to happen. 
Yeah, that's been going to happen for a very long time and uh, we are ground jury. I'm sure they were thinking exactly the same, whether they were going to pull her up or not because it looked a little bit dangerous out there. Well, away from the start is our latest starter for France. It's uh, Mina Saig with uh, Penvins de, de Dives. They start on 33.10. Ellie Healy going to the last. Mina Saig and Penvins uh, de Dives. 33.1 dressage in uh, 15th place. Ellie Healy coming home. Looks a little bit tired actually. Midnight Dancer. So they're jumping the 22nd of the 22 numbered fences. And that was a real shame she had that early run out because um, I think she would have been inside the time and uh, she'll be kicking herself for that little mistake. She will indeed. Well, just waiting for our latest starter, <coughs> Mina Sain and Benvin de Deves to jump out over those white rails and uh, drop downhill this is a team rider for France to the first of the waters taking the slightly longer route safer but longer route at the two cartridges it's interesting because I, I presume if she's taking the long route at the first water she may take the long route at the second of the waters yeah maybe she's probably just playing it safe to start with you know there's not been many clears come home yet so um, perhaps she's just hoping for that clear round rather than worrying too much about the time I think she may have been held on course I'm not sure we haven't seen a red flag no, there is a red flag. There is a red flag. There is a hold out on course. Yeah, I think that's because of the pony that fell slightly earlier on. Yeah, so. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So they'll be held out on course. So what happens now? They're just, uh, there is Adrian Ditcham and his team. They're just uh, rebuilding this fence. I think it was uh, hit quite hard. And it's on, uh, it looks like it's on pins it is on pins isn't it well I think actually if you look at the middle of that spirit level it's been uh, broken so whether they're <coughs> going to just to repair that there is a black flag alternative there it's a very long black uh, flag alternative some 15 20 seconds to go the long route we think 15 probably yeah, I don't think you'll see many people take the long route there, but what these riders need to be really careful of is that they're actually getting the ponies back so that they can just pop up the step with power, not speed. The problem before was the pony was way too fast, so he just couldn't get his front legs out of the way. You can see that the uh, plastic has been broken by the uh, rider that fell there. Nichelle Swinkles and Snow. It'll be interesting to see what they do now because it's not something I suppose they carry with them, <laughs> Perspex. No, I'm actually surprised to see that inner fence, to be honest. Um, looks like they're fixing it and will be away again shortly. Yeah, it does look like that. What they're going to do is they're going to uh, <coughs> black that out now with uh, some tape, just as a safety precaution. So just repairing this uh, fence at the <laughs> far end of the Sorry, course. Sorry Ellie, it's all right. well done by the way. Thank I'm drag you over here. The Thanks. Team, uh, 13AB, the kitchen sills. Right, just, I don't care what the background level. is, just as long as it looks Bounce all right. Bounce up over okay. the stem. Mm -hmm. this. 
Just stand. Don't want to see oh, that though. Don't want to see that. Let's go. Combination that have uh, finished so far, but we. I think we've got uh, uh, down at the start Ellie Healy with uh, Lizzie Greenwood Hughes. We'll catch up with Ellie. Hello there. Yes, I do have Ellie Healy. It's um, fun and games down here. We've had a few technical issues, but Ellie, well done you. I know you had that stop. Just talk yeah. us through your round. Um, he was amazing. He's only eight, so to be here is quite amazing because we've had him since a four-year-old and he was amazing around the whole course. I just turned too close to the tree and he just ducked out. Um, it's annoying because he's never had a cross-country penalty before, but um, I guess being Pathfinder, you've got to go and do it and I've done my job so hopefully the rest of the team can not do that and they can get a good score and still stay in medal position overnight. Well I heard your chef to keep asking you to sort of purge all the information yeah. that you'd learnt on that course. Just yeah. what did you tell your, your fellow teammates? Um, I just said because the, the water, the second waters, and um, we were all a bit nervous about that because it was quite complicated but actually it rode really well um, so just try and boost their confidence because I don't think they want to hear all the bad things because I'm sure they'll be fine and we've all we've got really tough trials in Britain like this so we were quite ready for the challenge and um, just not my day today but um, I hope they all can go well. But it was just the one run out wasn't one it so there's only yeah. 20 penalties I mean frankly I know we've only had a few but this is yeah. already looking a very tough is. course isn't so, it? So and he did a really nice test yesterday so we started in sixth so come hopefully we won't be too far down um, after cross country day and it will all be to play for tomorrow. Well done. How are you finding these championships other than that run out obviously? They're amazing. It's just such a good team atmosphere. We've all got a cottage that we're staying in together and it's just nice building a relationship with loads of nice girls and um, we all get on well. So it's been an amazing experience and I've always dreamt of doing it and so to be here is quite unreal. How old are you? I'm 16. So this is your last year in ponies? Yeah, um, so I think I've got a younger brother, so I think he'll take the ride on my pony. Um, so lucky we don't have to sell him just yet, because um, all the other riders are there last year too, so they've got to say goodbye to theirs. Um, but their ponies have a lifetime to jump around there. You've got a spider hanging off your chin, we're just going to move that. It was only a little one, don't worry. Um, is this what you want to do? do you, who are your heroes? Um, I like Gemma Tattersall because, I don't know, she's just a really amazing cross-country rider, and that's my favourite bit. Um, yeah, I'd love to event professionally. Um, my mum did a up to three star, so we've got a lot of support from her, so it's quite, quite nice to be doing what she did. And then my brother does it too, so it's quite a family thing. OK, well, I just heard the PA saying we're close to getting underway. Well done to you. Don't worry about those 20 pens. It'll all be all right in yeah, the end. Hopefully. Get back over there, give your pony a pat. Well yeah, done. Thank you very much. OK, back to you, Spencer. Well, thank you, Lizzie. That fence now has been repaired. And we'll be back underway very shortly. That uh, fence there at 13A and B. Well, uh, all sorts of drama already, Kate, here at the FEI Pony Europeans. We've had a couple of 20s. We've had the one full there in only the first... How many have we seen now? First uh, six riders out on course. We've seen two with 20, one fall. Yeah, I mean, it's causing uh, you know enough problems, isn't it? So I think the, the corner combination early on is, is something that people are probably worrying about. And this fence here, you know, the step up to the, um, to the spirit level, they've just got to be really careful that they don't come too fast because it really is a very short distance. They need power, not speed. Well, Mina says she will be next to get underway, and she is underway now at the Bishop Burton Pencils. The uh, lovely little Dan Benvins de Daves, a dressage of 33.1. So what they do now is they take a stop time, her held time, and uh, her restart time. So her restart time and her held time will be taken away from her overall time on course, and that given that gives her then the refusal at, at the corner. Uh, she was brave to do that after jumping one fence, didn't really have much time to get back into a rhythm, but that is another 20 penalties for the French combination. French are the uh, defending champions from 2017 European Championships. Yeah, and that is where you do have to change your plan sometimes, you know, as things change uh, throughout your cross-country round, you don't always stick to the original plan, there's always got to be a plan B.
So galloping away from that corner combination, putting those 20 penalties behind her. It is uh, now the Dodson and Horrell picnic table. And uh, on to the Bishop Burton Cordwood Stacks. Fences 12A. 12A and 12B. Apologies for being a bit jumpy here. We've got a lot of wasps in there. And we can't uh, get them out. But the overnight leader is about to get underway. Is uh, Jana Lemko for Germany with uh, Weith 14. Yeah, and interestingly, she did actually go on the nine strides that I walked. So um, it is doable. We're coming uphill towards that uh, bounce combination 13A, 13B and jumping very nicely up there. Yeah, and that was much better presented to that fence. You know, she actually came, she, she made the pony listen to her and then she just squeezed it nicely up the step so it didn't jump out into the rail. So our next rider's just warming up there, ready to start. She's the overnight leader. She's really got to be thinking about what's ahead of her. She'll be nervous and she'll be wanting to do her absolute best. She'll be going in about 10 seconds now. And off she goes. So really nicely over the first, oh, a little kick out with her leg, you know, she, she squeezed the pony to say move and it just uh, said no. So off she goes, she's really, really away now. Nicely down the step there, two strides. Yeah, they want this to be a good round. The German team in the lead. <laughs> At the second of those waters, it is uh, Mina Seich and uh, Penvins de Deves. Well, it looks like they were very confident through there, taking the direct route. Yeah, it did actually just pop an extra stride in there on the turn, which um, looked like it rode really well. We've seen some come through that on three strides, and that one's the first I've seen come through on the four. And here comes our overnight leader as she gallops down the hill towards the next fence. Yeah, she just caught a leg, her, her front leg on that rail coming in. So hopefully that's just sharpened her up for the next fences. And again, just chipped in there. She just needs to really think about what's coming up next. Is she gonna go straight at this corner combination? So she's up the pace now, she's actually moving up towards the corner combination. And it looks like she's going to take the long route. Yeah, a number have taken that long route at the Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners at 9 and 10. It's uh, much safer but wastes quite a bit of time. Interesting when we do get some scores just to see what that time is riding like, whether anyone's been inside the time or not. I'm just waiting for those to appear on our screen. Well, galloping uh, away from those two corners, they go, in fact, the longer route, so they've still got one corner left to jump. This is at 10, and they go to the Dodson and Horrell Park picnic table at 11, bit of a let up fence. She was slow through there. She was really slow through there, but she played it safe. You know, she doesn't want 20 penalties on her record. Um, and I think, you know, the way the sun is, you go from a really bright sunshine into that dark part under the trees where that corner is, and it's really risking a an early run out and having an early run out really does make it difficult to finish the the course really positively well an 
anxious moment at those cordwood stacks. Very nearly uh, ground to a halt, but they kept the forward momentum going. They now go on to the uh, Kitchen Civils European Spirit level with that Black Failure alternative. They're going the direct route, jumping up. There's not much room up there when they land. They've got to be very quick and very athletic to jump that very uh, upright Spirit level. Yeah, there's really only about three yards from the top of that step to the rail. There's not much space at all. So the, uh, we have got some scores in. So the score for Isabel uh, Comerford and Colour Me Fancy, 2.8 time penalties. They finish on 34.1. They are the uh, score to beat at the moment with Ellie Healy in second. She had 20 jumping, 7.6 time in uh, the Pony European Championship, 55.7 in second. And in third, Giovanna Bolafio and Jamal Ganor for Italy, round in uh, 6.54, four time penalties, 20 jumping, 61.2 is their two-phase score. For Anne van Dijk and Hoppenhoff's uh, Kander Z is away for Belgium. Anxious moments at seven at that rail drop. Yeah, and there really is a big drop on those rails. You know, you don't see it till the very last minute, and that's why those ponies are just having a little look. Or well, just jumping the Rainbow Aquine Hospital Trocaner at 17 onto the uh, TES Home Care Limited Lake at 18A, B and C is the overnight leader, is uh, Jana Lemko for Germany and a Weit 14. So coming downhill, looks like she's going to take the quick route. Want three strides in here, going to get four. Oh, she does get the three. And clear, we know they're clear because we see them on the other side of the tree and they power up the hill. Yeah, and she's got a minute to get home now. Well, just jumping the Dodson and Horrell picnic table at 11. And uh, disappearing up the hill, Anne van Dijk and Hoppenhoff's Kander Z. 32.2 the dressage in 13th place after the dressage. Team rider for Belgium. And uh, eighth out on course. And they jump through the cordwood stacks. Yeah, and she's just giving him a pat there to just reassure him he's been a good boy, keep him really confident as she gallops on to the next. Well, there's cordwood stacks at 12A and 12B, and uh, they now go towards the bounce combination at 13A and B. And that's the best I've seen at Ridden so far today. Really nicely just popped up there and nicely over the rail. Well, the uh, overnight leader then coming to the penultimate fence, Jana Lemkil, Vite 14, at this very tricky. She's going direct, jumps the first, and runs out at the second. So that is 20 penalties right towards home, and she's over the time as well. That is very, uh, very frustrating. She knows it as well. I'm surprised she went that direct route. I thought she was going to go long. She's taken a couple of longer routes especially at the two corners and then to take that quick route there was a real risk yeah i think it was and you know she she was never going to make the time she was already four seconds over by the time that she got to that combination so it was a big risk and sadly it didn't pay off no well that uh, puts pay to them at the moment 38 seconds over already jana lemkel and divide 14 Well, he's uh, safely home. Next to start, and uh, away, and onto the first of the waters. This is now Georgia King for Great Britain. Georgia riding, uh, dropped the subject on a dressage of 37.4. Georgia had uh, this horse on lease from Anya Collis in July last year. Last October, they were pony champions at the NSCA Championships in the 1 meter 10 show jumping and the 1 meter 10 uh, JWS Magic Third European Championships 2014 for the Irish team and two years ago in Wilhelmsburg for the uh, British team and now back on the British team with the uh, Georgia King 37.4 their dressage they're taking the direct routes as well up at the two corners 
Gets quite close to the first of them, runs downhill to the second, eyes it up, jumps that well. Brilliant. She was really good there. She rode really positively and the pony stayed so true to its line and she just is really having a great ride. Well away from the Dodson Horrell picnic table at 11, Georgia King with a drop the subjects up to the two cord piles, the cordwood stacks at 12A and 12B. That was really nice round the turn there. She made a really deliberate bending line and actually the pony just stayed in a lovely balance and just popped through those, uh, those log boxes nicely. Up to this bounce, 13AB, the Kitchen Civil's European spirit level gets quite close, but that I think probably helped the distance on the top. Yeah, I think it did. You know, the, the distance is really, really short. When I walked it this morning, I was surprised how short it was, but you know, these are only tiny little ponies, but some of them have such huge strides. The Riders just need to bear that in mind when they're coming up that step. Well, away from the start is uh, Lilu Duska de Castang and a winner two, 37.1 dressage, 27th after the dressage phase. Lilu de Castang with a winner two. On to the uh, early part of the course, as they're making their way home. Georgia King. Georgia's having uh, a great ride here, isn't she? Yeah, she looks the fantastic. Subject. Looks like he's really enjoying himself out there lots of support from the home team on uh, home soil of course here at Bishop Burton College well this is uh, back to Lilu du Castang and uh, winner two at the first of the waters over the shotgun quickly through and out over the bird's nest. Georgia King, very nearly home, jumps the Rainbow Equine Hospital Trocaner at 17, comes back down to the second of the waters. Still flying. This uh, would be interesting to get a check on her time. One minute 54 to get home. I wouldn't think that would be too far away. No, I think she could do it. If she keeps riding positively like she is, she could, uh, she could get there. Jumps the first of those at roll tops. Ooh, gets close to the second. She's riding well. She's keep, she keeps kicking. Well, clear at the TS Home Care at Limited Lake. And uh, on to the now jump. The uh, two fences before home. It's the, the penultimate fence. Well, the uh, hay carts. Just jumping that hay cart at 19, onto the hanging flower tray at 20. Georgia King dropped the subject. She gives him a little pat there as she comes down the hill. She's letting him run really nicely in a lovely balance just down that hill. Minute to get home. It's very hilly out there. Energy zapping. They've done the best they can with the ground, considering the weather we've had. We've had a bit of rain here. It's taken the sting out of the ground. But very clever, Lilu Ducastang and uh, winner two at that uh, Kitchen Civil's European Spirit level at 13A and B. Now coming to the penultimate fence. It is uh, George King going the long route. Interesting. That may be team orders. Yeah, I think that was really sensible. She's had a fantastic round so far. And I think, you know, she can still get home in the time if she keeps motoring. It looks like she will make that time. She's riding as an individual, in fact. Drop the subjects. It's uh, 14, 13 seconds to get home. She's going to make it, I think, just about. And this will be the uh, first inside the time. Great round there. They stop the clock with uh, two seconds. Two seconds inside the time. So Georgia King on 37.4. No jumping, no time penalties. They finish on 37.4 into third place. Well, away from the start is for Germany, Sophia Rousel and uh, Camillo W.E. The German combination on a dressage of 26.4, riding as an individual. We have the team members and a few individuals in the mix. They're just about to approach the uh, white rails. And I think what Georgia just showed is you can actually take a long route and still get within the time. You can't take two, though. She could. She, 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 
kept up a relentless gallop though, didn't she, the whole way around. Didn't like she, she wasn't rushing at any point, she just stayed in a rhythm the whole way. Yeah, she did. She rode beautifully. You know, she stayed, like you say, she stayed in that lovely rhythm. She didn't push the pony out of its, its natural balance and, you know, she paid the price by riding a really beautiful round. Well, at the second of the waters, the TS Home Care Limited Lake, 18 ABC, is uh, Lilou Ducastang for France, winner two. On to uh, Sophia Rosel and uh, Camillo W.E. at the Bishop Burton Pencils at eight. So they gallop uh, uphill to this influential fence at nine and ten, the Hod Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners. while taking that longer, safer, but longer route. Sophia Rosel and Camillo W.E. takes quite a long time, this long route. Yeah, it does, and I think she just needs to be careful that she doesn't get this pony a little bit long and flat. Just getting a bit long in its stride, and she just wants to keep its hind leg underneath it so she doesn't actually make a mistake coming to these fences. Well, away from the corners onto the Dodson Horrell Park picnic table at 11 and up to the Bidget Burton <coughs> Cordwood Stacks. Yeah, she went round that turn on 10 strides. Like I said earlier, it actually walks on 11. It's not important, the actual stride, but it just shows that this pony is actually very big striding and she's keeping moving all the way around. Slow down, coming to this, slow down, slow down. Good. Yeah, that was clever. The pony just backed itself off that step. I was a little bit worried she was coming with too much speed, but actually these ponies are so smart. They actually uh, look after their riders most of the time. Well, our latest starter is uh, now Luna Richter for Denmark and Sissy DK Tento. 38 dressage in 37th place, in fact, 33rd place after dressage. Luna Richter for Denmark, team member for Denmark, Sissy DK Tento. As across the roads, Sophia Rosel, Camillo WE, individual for Germany. Give a little reminder. So those still sort of. Uh, full of running. Yeah, I'm not really sure why she did that. She's obviously worried about the next fence. Perhaps she's had problems with this pony in the past. Well, about to jump out over the white rails. Well, just about to jump out of the trees, and uh, they've now jumped out of the trees. Luna Richter for Denmark, Sissy Digi Tento at the first of the waters. Safely out over the bird's nest. That was very neatly done. Yeah, he's such a smart jumper, this one, isn't he? I mean, his little knees are up under his chin. Down to the second of the waters. For Germany, individual rider, it is uh, Sophia Rosel and Camilo W.E. into, out of, and uh, looks like no uh, problems for them. But we've uh, now got, uh, at the start, Georgia King and Lizzie Greenwood-Hughes. Um, and she began clear up until then, and I was up on time, so I was like, may as well go long, keep it clear. You're going as an individual, so you could kind of get to make your own choices, yeah. do you? As an individual, on our first course walk, I said to John, I'm not so keen on the um, straight route, and she was like, well, you're an individual, do what you feel is right. And definitely, if you're clear, keep the clear, really. Better than a few times. Well done. Finally, you're Alan King's daughter. Is he watching? Obviously, this is the race course, Alan King. Is he, is he watching at home? Yes, yeah. He came this morning. Um, missed the dressage. Not really his thing. Obviously, busy at home. Um, but he came this morning to see the jumping. Well done, you. Good luck with the rest Thank of the competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, great to hear from uh, Georgia King clear inside the time. Luna Richter, City Diki Tento. 
up at the cordwood stacks. What you don't really appreciate here is actually there's quite a steep hill coming up to this step up so if they're tiring they really do need to make sure that the back end is under them so they can really push up the step oh yeah, that was a big effort was a huge effort just chipped in a stride well the new starter <coughs> this is uh flippo Ginelli with uh oh my goodness Brian cops here Brian cop Cospino, King del Col, San Marco. I think we'll call this one number 13. <laughs> 13th to go, 234 is his number. We'll call him 234. And this guy here, he's just come off the bridle a little bit, you know, so she needs to just keep him moving forward. Yang Cospino, King Del Col, San Marco, Filippo Ginelli taking the uh, slightly longer route but safer at those two cartridges. Yeah, I think that was a really sensible idea actually. The pony's just running slightly through the bridle and, um, and I think he actually played it safe. He doesn't want to have a run out so early on. I mean, you can see how keen this pony is. Yeah, very keen to get on with his job, and it's interesting watching them. I mean, a lot of them are very bold and very brave, and once the adrenaline is up, it's difficult to try then to, to just uh, contain this excitement. He's another one taking the longer route. So, Bianca Spino, King del Col, San Marco, and uh, Filippo Cinelli for Italy, member of the Italian team. I've got that name out now. I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably wrong, but... Oh, so that's a different route. We've not seen anybody take this route yet where they've actually jumped the first part and actually turned right. Seems a bit quicker. Yeah, and actually worked really well. So that was, uh, that was a good plan. Well, galloping up to the Dodson and Horrell picnic table as a new starter away from the course. This is uh, Finding Nemo, Luana Palmquist with a dressage of 40.8. Left them in 37th place. Overnight, after two days of dressage, they jump the first two. Oh, Bianca Spino, King Del Colm, San Marco, and uh, Filippo uh, Cinelli at the two cordwood stacks. And interesting to see that this pony doesn't actually have any back boots on. Quite often these ponies and horses get terrible boot rubs and it makes them really, really lame for the next day. So possibly, possibly this pony is... Uh, are we galloping up to this step? We are. Mm, he did, uh, well, he got through. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective and actually made it happen. I'm sure that wasn't the way he was told to ride it, because it was a little bit uh, dangerous, I thought. But uh, Luana Palmquist and Finding Nemo into the trees. They go and they disappear out over the Agri Diamond Ditch and up to the FG Adamson and Sun White Rails at five. So just uh, crossing the road, it is uh, Bianco Spino, King Del Col, San Marco, Filippo Ginelli for Italy. Five minutes and 17, 16 seconds to get home now. Oh, so we've had a unfortunately run out there. I'm not quite sure what happened at the first part. Yeah, Luana Richter and uh, Sissi Diki Tento, 20 penalties at the second last. Well, that's when I walked it, said it would be an influential fence. Luana Kampfist and uh, Finding Nemo at the first of the waters, jumps bravely and neatly through there, representing Sweden. Yeah, just interesting how she just drops her reins and the, and the pony just does his thing. Luana Palmquist and Finding Nemo over the Bishop Burton pencils at eight. 
They climb uphill through the, the uh, ropes and they look like they may be taking the quick route, Luana Palmquist and uh, Finding Nemo at these uh, two corners, the Hobson and Porter Terrace corners 9 and 10. But uh, a... Ooh, I'm not sure. Well, that'll be something for the ground jury to have a good look at, won't it? Because to me, it didn't look like the pony jumped the fence. But with this 50 penalty rule, maybe, maybe she'll get away with it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I spoke to the president of the ground jury last night, David Lee, along with Nikki Herbert, and they said that they've got cameras on fences at the uh, but those that needed them. Well, now away from the start, it is uh, Holly Love for Ireland. Holly riding in the team for Ireland. She rides. Uh, Cochrane Charlie. Cochrane Charlie bringing forward a dressage score of 36.7. Not two strides off the bank. Cochrane Charlie with. Uh, Holly Love. What a lovely picture that is. His ears are pricked and he's just galloping along in his own stride. And what we don't see here on the camera is, uh, is how big that ditch is under that rail. Well, the current leaderboard, it is uh, Sophia Rosel and Camillo W.E., the individual for Germany out in front on 30.1. Isabella Comerford for Ireland, Color Me Fancy in second, 34.1. Anne Van Jek and Hoppenhoff's Kanda Z on 36.6 uh, .6 in third. Just jumping. Ooh! That was a real shame. I mean, I'd, I do feel for her. It was very disappointing for that to happen so late in the course. But taking the longer routes, already nearly a minute over the time. It is Bianco Spino, King Del Col San Marco, Filippo Cinelli for Italy. He's just got one fence left to jump. As Holly Love and uh, Clochreo Charlie, they jump through the first of the waters. Well, Holly Love and Clockra Charlie, they, uh, another one looked like they're eyeing up the quick routes at the Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners. <coughs> There's not much time after the ropes, is there, to see that corner? No, there isn't. And, you know, he just <coughs> chipped one in there. I think he just saw it at the last minute and, you know, he was really clever with his feet and and athletic and that's what these ponies need to be they need to be athletic we don't always get there on the right stride so they've got to help us out and if they, if they can't help us out you know they're no good to anybody and these ponies are really showing their class today well there's a short hold on course while the medical team just uh, look after Luana Palmquist and finding Nemo Well, Holly Love, Clock Red Charlie, up to the bounce. Read that really nicely, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And like I said earlier, he's really clever and smart, this one. And, and he's looking really classy. Looked like a real uh, old campaigner up there. Just found his stride, nipped up the step, nipped over the uh, spirit level. Yeah, and what I like with him is, you know, she just keeps him in his, in his balance and she just sits quietly and lets him do his job. Well, we've had uh, now 15 combinations out on course, and it's still Sophia Rosal and Camillo W.E. leading on uh, 30.1. Next to go will be for Great Britain, and it's Great Britain's team member Hattie Grace and Noble Superman. Look forward to them as they uh, get ready to start. There is that leaderboard, Sophia Rosal, 30.1 in front for Germany individually. 
Isabel Comerford, Color Me Fancy in second, 34.1. Anne Van Jeck and Hoppenhoff's Candace Z in third on 36.6. And in fourth place, currently it's Lulu Duskeistang and uh, winner two on 37.4. Fifth, Georgia King for Great Britain, individual rider for Great Britain, dropped the subject on 37.4. In sixth place, I'm just going to go on, I don't know whether to question that, because it says that uh, Filippo Cinelli and uh, Bianco Spino King Del Cole San Marco was in fact inside the time. It looked like when he jumped through the second last, I thought it had gone red and was nearly a minute over the time. So it would be interesting if that does get corrected on the board. It's currently showing that it is uh, clear and inside the time. Well, being held now, Holly Love. Holly being held at fence 13. I don't, can't believe she's being held at fence 13. Yeah, that was a bit of a bit of a disappointing fence to be pulled up at. I mean, that's you know not the best one for her. But well, in fact, we were understanding she may have jumped that fence already. It would be a very unusual fence for her to be held at. You usually held at straightforward fences just to get you back into a rhythm. Um, it, it would uh, only be. You'd only be held at a fence like that if it was absolutely necessary. Yeah, I think you're right, Spencer. I, I remember now actually her jumping up really well through it. That's right, because we said how nippy it was. We did. We're half asleep. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll be back underway very shortly, but that is the current leaderboard. So we got down to Bianco Spino, King Del Col, San Marco, and Filippo Cinelli for Italy. Ellie Healy in seventh for Great Britain with uh, those 20 jumping penalties, seven minutes and uh, three seconds. So 7.6 and 20 jumping, they're on 55.7. They're the top seven in the proceedings so far. And of the, how many have we had now? 14, we've got one on course, and that is Holly Love. Of the 14, I think half the field have gone clear. We've had refusals at uh, 12, 12B. That was, uh, that was Ellie Healy at the second of those cordwood piles. 21A, 21B, 18C, and whether we've seen all of those fences, oh, the 18C was coming out of the second of the waters, and uh, Sophia Lingard and uh, uh, Annabelle, they came, uh, they had a stop there, but there's been refusals all over the place, and we didn't think there would be one particular fence that would cause problems, we, we knew it was going to be spread. Yeah, I think that corner combination is, is going to be very influential still. You know, it's um, going from light to dark and that corner does just suddenly pop up on the turn. Well, it's great to see that there's so many people here that have attended the uh, Pony European Championships here at Bishop Burton. It's uh, fascinating to watch these ponies. Remember, they range from 138 centimetres to 151 centimetres, that with shoes on. They are only about 14-2, 13-2, 14-2, jumping around this track. And the cross-country course is of novice height and a serious novice track. Yeah, it is, and it's really technical. When I walked it this morning, I actually couldn't believe um, how difficult it was. You know, I've never been to a Pony Europeans before, and it was, um, it was quite an eye-opener. The training that goes into these ponies is, is just something else. Yeah, it's incredible. And it's, you know, the likes of Kitty King, Laura Collett, we've seen them. They started in ponies. I think Kitty King, one of the first riders to medal at pony, junior, young rider and senior level. And it's great to see so many of them coming up through the uh, ranks. Angus Smales, Tom McKeown, you know, a number of event riders have started at this level and uh, gone right the way through into uh, Olympics and representing Great Britain at uh, the very top of the sport. Well, a uh, short hold on course. Uh, we'll be uh, back underway very shortly. The medical team just checking out the fall of Luana Palmquist and uh, Finding Nemo. She's absolutely fine. I think she was up on her feet fairly quickly, but um, health and safety paramount, and especially being at a, at a college, they're very, very strict on the health and safety here. So just being checked out by the doctors, and then we'll be uh, back underway with Holly Love. Holly for Ireland, team member for Ireland, and uh, Clock Rare Charlie. They are held currently. I think there they are in screen. I think they're held now at fence 14, which is that straightforward log um, just after this combination here. The log just... Uh, what fence is that? And that might actually yeah. just benefit Holly a little bit, that the horses, the pony's having a little breather here. You know, she's, she's sort of, where are we, halfway around the course. He's just catching his breath, and then she can, uh, she can go again and... and push the buttons yeah she's held at the basics table at 14 so a, a straightforward fence 
Um, so it is a you know it's a nice fence to be held at. But I think Lizzie Greenwood Hughes is down at the uh, wash down area, the cool down area, where there's so much attention that is. Uh, taken after the horses have finished cross country their time on the cross country remember the optimum time six minutes 50 six minutes 44 and out of the ones that have gone we've had three inside the optimum time so uh, that we thought maybe seven or eight so that is on par at the moment as a percentage we think that might be just about right but um just going to check if uh, Lizzie Greenwood Hughes is ready for us down at the wash area, just to, so you can have a chance really to see what does go on once the horse is finished cross country, because that's often an area that we don't see on camera or don't see as spectators. Um, you know, when they finish across country, when the, the welfare and how they're looked after. So let's hand over now to Lizzie Greenwood Hughes. Yeah, well, we're just sort of backstage, as it were, in the collecting ring and the washdown area, and I'm with one of the team vets here, Con Kennedy. I know you're waiting for your Irish horse to come in. Obviously, it's been held. Just tell me what sort of things vets have to do here on Cross Country Day and just how difficult it is when you have holds on course. Well, we prepare a team to meet the ponies as they come in, uh, prepare the ponies as they go out as well. And when they come in, we check their heart rates and cool them down. Uh, we have a set rotor for that put some water on them if they're hot, scrape it off, make sure they're comfortable, then run the heart set are down, get them back to the stables, attend any cuts, bruises or so on. So on. And presumably you do a lot with horses as well, not just ponies. So is there any difference in this sort of setup for you? No, it's pretty much a standard setup. You know, I've done the seniors and the pony riders. You teach the little professionals at this stage and they learn and they're very good. I mean, horses and ponies deal very well with this sport. Obviously, they're all fit before they do this. How long will it take them to get their heart rate back to normal and to sort of be looking normal? Uh, within five minutes, most of them are back under 100. And then I'd say in another 10 minutes, they're back to normal rate, you know, if the preparation has been right. And are you involved in making sure they're looking beautiful for the trot up tomorrow morning? Absolutely. As in not grooming them, Absolutely. obviously, but sound. Yeah, we check them till about 11 tonight and then we'll be back in the stables tomorrow morning at 5, just as precaution, move them out and maybe ice them and loosen them up. You know, they're like any, like a rugby team, they'll be sore, a bit sore here and there, so you're just trying try to have them free and ready to go. They've done a lot of work with the ground here at Bishop Burton. Are you happy with the going? Very happy, yeah. It went from being fast ground to being good ground and they've watered and aerated and put sand at the landing and takeoffs, which is most important to decrease the concussion and then leave us with sound ponies. We had some rain last night, you must have been it thanking well. that. Yes, it helped, yeah, absolutely, the rain gods. OK, so just finally, because I know you've got to go in a minute, your, what, will the, what will your vet team be saying to the Irish laddies out there walking around? What can they do to keep the walls happy while it's being held on course? Our next jump is a quite a big table, so we just have to say, look, get focused again here. It's quite a long hold. Get focused again and get, put your leg on and go. Okay, I'll let you get back. Thank you Thank so you. much, Con okay. Kennedy. So it's all happening here, Spencer. You know, obviously we've got all these horses and po ponies, rather, just wandering around, waiting to be told that that how how much time is going to be added to their start times. It's very difficult for them, but they're all so relaxed. I mean, you know, as a top class eventer, that you're just in your own bubble, aren't you? You're, they're all just very quietly walking around. They're minding their own business. They're not worrying about anything else. And I think we might be about to get started. So I'm going to hand back to you, Spencer and Kate. Yeah, thanks very much, Lizzie. Indeed, you know, it's a, it's a part of the eventing that everybody gets to know. Eventually, at some point in their career, they're held out on course, and it's, it can be an anxious uh, time. But <clears throat> these uh, ponies will be held. They'll be told what to do by the chef to keeps. She's just getting warmed up, and we'll be back underway. You can see the crowds. They're starting to build here at Bishop Burton. And great viewing around this track. At some of the uh, more influential fences, certainly as uh, Holly Love will get uh, back into her rhythm. <coughs> well, uh, Clockrare Charlie and Holly Love are held at fence 14. Fairly straightforward table. That basics table. Well, down at the start is uh, next to start. And Kate, you've got details. Yeah, this is um, this is young Hattie Grace. She's uh, she's riding young, well, he's not so young. Nine uh, nine year old noble Superman. He's uh, he's owned by Hattie's grandfather Vin Jones and her father Simon Grace. Um, 
I think the background was that he was originally bought from Laura Collett a couple of years ago, and um, and Hattie was a reserve last year um, for the team. So you know she's done brilliantly to get onto the team this year, and um, I'm really excited to watch her go. I, I hope she has a great round. Yeah, just 16 years old. <coughs> we heard earlier that they're all in their last year at ponies. Just finished her GCSE. And a wonderful partnership started at B90 two years ago and progressed to pony trials last year. And this is their first time on the British team. Well, just in case we forget her name, we just have to look at her arms. <laughs> you know, and there's Hattie's mum there. She's just watching and, and, and wishing Hattie the best of luck as she... Uh, is just walking around trying to keep her really calm and make sure she doesn't get anxious and too nervous because everybody's nervous in the start box you know they'd be uh, they'd be lying if they said they weren't you know we all come out that start box wanting to do our best and uh, when you're walking around like this it is it, it is pretty horrible having to wait to go you know I'd uh, I'd much rather just turn up at the start box and, and be sent away and poor Hattie's having to just walk round and round in circles and she's probably thinking about her plan and you know just hoping that everything's going to go um, to the A plan. Well, there is uh, Luana Palmquist just being taken off in the 4x4. Uh, four four. I think she was just a little bit winded when she parted company with Finding Nemo. Hattie Grace just uh, getting warmed up, as too is uh, Polly Love. You know, and Hattie there, she's about to start. And, you know, we haven't mentioned um, what a big supporter her grandfather has been in the sport. You know, he's had horses for many, many years. He has Sam Hobson riding for him now. And, and Sarah Cohen, who's ridden for him for, for years and years and, and has the fabulous um, treason that she's competing at top level. So Holly's away now. Off she goes to the next fence. Well, clock rush, Charlie, on to that uh, table fence. The basics table at 14. Hattie getting revved up. Well, jumping across the CR Reynolds Road crossing at 15. Holly Love chased by the Irish supporters. Look Red Charlie looking full of running. Wouldn't have done him any harm to have a break. No, I think he's just, you know, he's just got his second win now, hasn't he? He had a little break. She could uh, take a breath as well. And, and look at her, she's flying. And I think she's having a fantastic round. I just hope she gets home and has no penalties. Yeah, she's certainly going very well. Well, the final few seconds of countdown for Hattie Grace and Noble Superman. Well, we're just uh, running. We're here 20 odd minutes behind time. Holly Love jumps the trochaner, coming towards home now. Will she go straight at the brushes, do you think? Well, that is the question. She's got this first water, the TAS Home Care Limited Lake at 18 A, B, and C of the 22 numbered fences. So she turns slightly right handed, drops downhill to this three part combination in the bottom of the bowl. Majority of them have taken the long, ooh, just has a look at the water, four strides. And that fence has actually been, been ridden really well on three and four strides. You know, the, the course designer has done a great job there. He's, 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 he's given these kids a really good option. Hattie Grace is away with Noble Superman, 32.8 dressage, lying in 12th place after dressage. They're on to the second. Or disappearing through the trees and uh, coming on to the first of the combination fences that comes early on at fence three yeah and he nearly skipped off there in one stride he's actually for, for such a little guy he's got quite a big stride on him you know i still think we might see one I always say that and never do, but I'd, I'd like I'd like to think that maybe one will do it just to prove me right. He did. No, no, one? not this one. We have seen one. Oh, we have go seen on one stride, yeah. Um, she's uh, now going through the trees to the Agri Diamond Ditch at four. <coughs> well, at that penultimate fence and taking the longer route, that probably very sensible after being held out on course. Holly Love and Clockrea Charlie. 
be interesting to see her time, but of course we won't see that on the, the uh, screen because she was held. It'll be totally irrelevant. She needs her stop and start time taken away from her overall time. She now gallops to the uh, Denji last, the uh, 20 seconds and final fence. Well, a lovely round for this uh, Irish rider, Holly Love and Clockwork Charlie, their home to complete. Yeah, wasn't that a great round? She did a fabulous job. Well done, Holly. Well, Hattie Grace, <coughs> noble superman through the first of the waters onto this uh, rail on the top of the bank. Oh, look at him jump that. He didn't even look. He just popped over it, landed in a balance, and now he's just running, cruising down the hill off to the next fence. So what will she do here? Is she going to go short or is she going to go long? I think she's going to go short. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, she is going short. She's taking that left-handed uh, route. Just looking down the times... We've got a time in for the Italian. I said I thought he was a minute over. I'm not quite sure that time. It says six minutes and two seconds, meaning he was 42 seconds inside the time. So we'll have to see if that is correct. Oh, that was beautifully through there, Hattie. She just rode that so well. The pony just jumped the first corner and just stayed in a lovely straight line and just popped through the second. Well, I'm just going to give you some uh, more provisional scores. Holly Love and uh, Clockrat Charlie, 6 minutes 44, their adjusted time. Bang on the optimum time. So they go into fourth place for uh, Ireland on a score of 36.7. The team standings at the moment, it is Great Britain out in front, 92.2. Germany second, 94.2. And France third, 96.5. Very, very close at the top. Yeah, and that was really well ridden because, you know, it's difficult when you're stopped on course to actually then keep moving afterwards and, and to get actually on the optimum time was brilliant. And Hattie rode beautifully up there, popped up the step and he just popped that lovely one stride in and really carefully over the rail. Well, I hope you're enjoying the coverage of the cross country here. Cross country day it is at the Pony European Championships here at Bishop Burton College in the United Kingdom. Our latest starter away from the uh, start is uh, Elsie Otto for the Netherlands, team rider for the Netherlands. She rides Orchids Megan, clear of the first three fences as uh, through the road crossing, Hattie Grace and Noble Superman still going very well. They look uh, full of running, galloping on strongly. You need a fit pony here and the uh, team from Great Britain will surely have got their horses and ponies fit. Well, as I said, I hope you're enjoying the uh, cross-country coverage. You can see people clapping and cheering as the home nation gallop round the course. It's uh, great to have you watching here at the FEI Pony European Championships. We know we've got a number of you watching in the United States, so uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Coming out of the wood over the white rails is our latest starter, Elise Otto for the Netherlands, Orchids, Megan, as uh, Hattie Grace, Noble Superman, jump the Trikana, anxious moment at the first part of the first water for Elise Otto and Orchids, Megan. 31.5 dressage in 10th place after dressage. Lovely little bay. Just checking his feet. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? He's just careful with his feet and actually, uh, that's what you want. You want them to be able to think for themselves. Hattie Grace, Noble Superman, at the second of the waters. Big, bold jump at the first of those roll tops and the second. Has she jumped out? Yes, she has. We can hear the crowd cheering from here. They're just behind us. In uh, We're in the TV compound. We're not out on the cross-country court, but we could hear them cheer from here. They're cheering her home. This is a team member for Great Britain, Hattie Grace, Noble Superman, going towards the uh, latter stages of the course now. Yeah, and isn't Hattie riding well? I mean, she just looks like she's... She's one for the future, for sure. Well, taking the direct routes at the Hobson and Porter, Terrace Corners, Elise Otto, Orchids, Megan. She looks determined. She does. And I think that's the only way you can be. You know, you've got to start out and actually mean business. If you start out feeling negative and worried, you know, that's, that's the vibe you give your horse. And it just doesn't doesn't end well actually normally when you come out the start box like that so she's really positive and she's going well no absolutely not 
I just have, I'm just watching these again, and I have to keep reminding myself, and, and I don't know whether you're the same. I'm watching them jump round. They don't look like ponies. They look like mini horses with professional riders on board. They're riding so well, and, you know, they are 14 too. They're tiny. Yeah, they are, and, you know, they've got, well, they've got hearts of lions, haven't they, to be doing it like this, and... Well done, Hattie. She just recovered really well there. I mean, that was unfortunate. He just slipped on the turn, and she's not going to quite, quite make the time, but she's she's ridden with absolute class the whole way round. Yeah, 0.4 of a time penalty for every second over. You can see the cross-country penalties clocking up on the bottom of the screen. She's going to uh, stop the clock. Ten seconds over, four time penalties. So, uh, Hattie Grace... And Noble Superman go into fifth place on 36.8. Yeah, and that, that long route that she took at the end, that, that just, you know, gave her those time faults that, um, sadly, she wasn't inside the time today. <coughs> Elise Otto, Orchids, Megan, they disappear out of view for a few seconds. Well, new starter out on course. This is for France. Gaetan Cusiono with Gaetan Cusino. Gaetan. Gaetan Cusino. French, Spencer, French. Yeah, and he actually just went on the stride there before the pony did. So fortunately, his pony's a little bit smarter than, than he was at that fence. You know, it's nice to see him riding positively, but uh, he doesn't want to get ahead of himself. Yeah, another one taking the long route here, playing safe. His pony was very clever again there he tried to add a stride but it, there wasn't one there and the pony just took control and looked after him yeah Gaetan Cousineau and uh, Pele de Wadalanu safely down the uh, two corners I think Wadalanu is correct <laughs> have to see the next time it comes up there's some very strong sounding names here it is. You're doing a great job, Spencer. That's why I'm leaving that bit to you. <laughs> so away from the start. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bit of a chance he starts. Is uh, Helena Bottoman. Yeah, we've all had that first shot at our first fence uh, in our lives. And it's, it's not a great feeling as you make a mistake to number one. So hopefully she'll put that behind her and be really positive for the next few coming up. Yeah, Helena... Uh, Bottoman and uh, Nibelungenstern away from the start over the first few fences. <laughs> well, just disappearing through the trees. They go to the second last now, the uh, angle brushes. The uh, AJW equestrian truck brushes. She's Elise Otto and Orchids Megan taking the direct route. Very Nicely honest. Done. Very Nicely honest. Done. <coughs> but she got she got the pony right back. She wasn't too fast. You know, the pony's full of running still. I mean look, she's although she's got plenty of time faults that she doesn't look like uh, he doesn't look tired at all when he finishes. Sorry, I disappeared. A wasp again. <laughs> well, Helena Bottoman and uh, Nibelungenstern. 41.7, 36th after dressage. Nibelungenstern, very bold, very uh, nimble through the first of the waters. Onto this rail on the top of the bank. An enormous jump. Yeah, I mean, look how athletic he is. I mean, he really is cat-like, isn't he, over these big fences? You know, and he just doesn't look like a pony. He looks like a small horse. He's really galloping and, you know, looks very classy. Well, 
or just waiting for uh, in fact down the hill they come Helena Bottoman and uh, Nibelengenstern yeah sadly we didn't see her jump the first element but uh, she certainly looked very good through the second yeah Nibelengenstern looking full of running going up to these cordwood stacks at 12A and 12B on that curving left-handed line Oh, gosh, she took off on 10 strides around there. And actually, you know, she perhaps was a little bit quick, but uh, she got away with it. Let's hope she just gets him back on his hind leg here, doesn't gallop up the uh, up the step like a lunatic. But no, we are going for it. Well, an important round for Germany. Member of the German team, very athletic up there. He's an athletic jumper, isn't he? Yeah, and she obviously knows him really well. She trusts him. She can keep coming at that kind of speed, whereas some of the others, you know, they're perhaps not as quick and careful in front as that one was, but that was brilliant. Well, this is uh, now a new starter. This is Bo Gaiman for Belgium. And she's riding Jo de la Grivardi. He starts on a dressage score of 36.3. Clear off the first three fences, really taking a pull. They may be small, but they're very much in charge. Yeah, they are, and sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's a bad thing. You know, um, I think they're fit, they're, they're ready, and, you know, look at him go. It's not such a great feeling, though, when you leave the start box and you haven't got much control, and you just hope, you hope you can ride sensibly and you can, you can get home safely. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you've, you've got to have that degree of control around the course, but you've got to have them that they want to get on with the job. Gaetan Kuznu and Pearl de Guadalhanu, we're not quite sure what uh, has happened to them. They're uh, furthest round the course, we believe. Well, Bergaman and uh, Joe de la Grivardi at the first of the waters. Yeah, he's just showing how much scope he's got here. He's really athletic, isn't he? And he just pinged over that fence. And she may not be liking the feeling she's got in the rain, but God, doesn't he perform when he gets there? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> They're so clever, aren't they? Yeah, I think the pony saw one about 10 strides out and she just sat with him and just went with it. I think those days of riding like that have gone <laughs> out of my book. That's your age, Spencer. They are. <laughs> well, up at the two corners and taking the direct route is uh, Joe de la Grivardi and Bo German. And pop through there with no problems at all. Yeah, and he just lifts his head when he comes to the fence, you know, and he just pops over it, doesn't make anything of it. Well, I can give you a score now. Going into second place is uh, Gaetan Cousineau and Pearl de Boilanou. They were clear inside the time. They finished on 34.0 and go into second place. That uh, lead still being held by Sophia Rosell and Camillo W.E. on 30.1. They are the leaders. Just away from the start is the individual rider from Ireland, Ava Bannan. Ava Banahan and uh, Regent de Movi. <coughs> Clear of the last, Nibelen Gunstern and uh, Helena Bottoman for Germany be uh, interesting to see her time it shouldn't take too long in fact uh, clear inside the time she finished on 41.7 in 10th place with that a great score then for germany if they should need it they uh, are the drop score in the team so far or well, absolutely flying bo goman and uh, joe de la gravardi belgian team member on 36.3 and this pony's really galloping. You know, I've seen some of them come up this hill and actually start to tire, but this doesn't look like it's tiring at all. 
We are just uh, jumping, just about to go to the third, maybe jumping the third because they started a while ago. In fact, they're at fence four. They're clear of four. This is the uh, Irish rider, Ava Banahan, and uh, Regent de Mauvy. Ooh, woof, an enormous jump into the water, really showing scope and out over that bird's nest. Yeah, he just, just chipped in there. He just had a little think about probably the last fence that he just jumped and was just having a look at that, that big drop. But uh, she's through it now and she's on to the next. And she saw a great shot there to the pencil fence. And uh, is she going to go straight here or is she going to take the long route? I think she's going to take the straight route. And what you really don't see on the camera is how hilly this course is. These ponies are having to go up and down and turn, and it's really very difficult for them. I can tell you how hilly it is. I ran <laughs> round it, and I couldn't walk the next day. I'm in serious training for this, this race I'm doing at the end of the month, and um, I'm trying to get fit and lose a bit of weight. Well, you're doing a great job. This pony was fantastic. It just popped through there brilliantly, and she's riding positively and having a great ride. So individual for Ireland, Ava Banahan, Regent de Movie. Just looking a little bit tired, and I think that's probably the result of all the pulling for uh, Goman and uh, Joe de la Grivardi. Now he's getting a second wind again, yeah. look, as he runs down the hill and he's speedy coming up again. I was the same. I was good downhill. It wasn't <laughs> quite so good on the huts. Often the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've gone past the arenas and they go back into the start-finish field to the two angle brushes. It's a tough question coming home. The AJW equestrian truck brushes, 21A, 21B. Looks like they're taking the long route. Yeah, she's not going to make the time, unfortunately, but she's she's ridden well and she's going to hopefully jump a clear round. Oh, she's well through there and just heading now to the last fence and I think this pony would be quite happy to finish, but she's ridden well and and she should be delighted. Yeah, great job. She's home. She's pleased. So she jumped in really boldly and now she's she's taken the the long route there, which I don't think wastes that much time when you're when you're moving this quickly. She's really motoring. Well, Ava Bannerhan is uh, nearly home. They've uh, jumped 17 on their way to the second of the waters now, the TES Home Care Le Limited Lake. Just. <laughs> well, getting a huge pat through the water for his efforts. Ava Banahan and uh, Regent de Movi, they go up the hill towards home. Just over a minute and 15 to get home now. Our well, latest starter for Italy is away individual for Italy. As uh, we follow home, Ava Banahan and Regent de Movi. Well, this is uh, our latest starter, Martina Guajera. And Olympic lads, dressage score 35.7. In uh, 19th place after dressage, up at the Cordwood Stacks. Fences at 12A and 12B. Yeah, jump that really nicely. Well, uh, this is uh, Great Britain's uh, individual rider, Connie Gill, with a uh, movie star the second. Dressage of 34.2. Connie. 
second season riding this mare. Did her first novice in May last year. And this is her first European, second at Brown Hall in the final trial. An Olympic... Uh Lux there, he just caught a leg jumping up the step. He was lucky, he was lucky he didn't just fall on the landing stride, but no, she's away again. Connie Girl and Movie Star, they go on as a really good racing finish there for Ava Banahan and Regent de Mulvey. No jumping, no time penalties. That puts them into fourth place on 34. In fact, they were one second over the time. Point four of a time penalty they go on to 34.9 and at 22nd place Down to the first water. Bonnie Gill and Movie Star the second. Just gets a little bit close to the uh, the uh, bird's nest coming out of the first water onto the hanging rail. Yeah, it did, but you know, she jumped in, she lengthened her range, she let the pony use its neck, so it stayed in a good balance, and she just kept, her, kept the contact as she came around the corner. I think she rode that really well. It didn't go to plan A, but you know, she was brilliant. Martina Grajera and Olympic Lads at the second of the waters, taking a slightly longer route. And it actually is a lot longer to take that route, but you know, she was motoring early. I'd wonder whether she can just make that time back now. Yeah, it's an energy zapping longer route as well as lots of twists and turns. Yeah, I think it is. And you know, you can see she's <coughs> just come off the bridle there, which, which isn't exactly what you want when you're this, this far around the course. Connie Gill, movie star the second at the Dodson Horror picnic table at 11 up to these two cordwood stacks at 12a and 12b Mokoni is 23rd of the 45 competitors so we're just halfway now in these FEI Pony European Championships at Bishop Burton College well, an extra jump there. Yeah, he just had a little spook at the sand, didn't he? Very good through that. She just kept him level and he popped up nicely over that step. On to this penultimate fence, taking the longer route. Ava Banahan, no, this is not Ava Banahan for Ireland. This is the Italian rider. Italian rider Martina Guajera and Olympic lads. Uh, just over the time allowed. The optimum, yeah, to, optimum time, 6 minutes 44 seconds. They're now uh, 10 seconds over coming to the final fence. Yeah, and she's home. There'll be a, a happy team there. Well, just about to come through the trees onto the white rails at five. The FG Adamson and Son white rails at five is uh, our latest starter. This is uh, Anna Schulte, Phil Taut, and Classic Molina. Conigel, movie star, the second. Look to be having a good round. I wouldn't say it was the fastest round so far. She is an individual rider. No, but she's just kept moving all the way. You know, she, she's she's doing a great job. You know, and she got the three strides there. She didn't add one. So, you know, you, you just wonder where she is on the course, whether she can, she can just make that time. And now look at her run up the hill here. 
Yeah, really opens up the strides, stride and puts the pedal to the metal. And that's so nice to see. You know, they love this sport, these ponies. You know, people, people sometimes say that they, they don't love it and we make them do it, but they wouldn't do this if they didn't love it. No, absolutely. So jumping the hay carts and uh, coming back towards the home start-finish fields. Checking her watch as she crosses over the road. She's got a minute to get home. She might just be okay. Well, she's got to go straight if she uh, if she's going to be okay. She can't afford to take another long route. Well, uh, Anna Schultz, Phil Tout, and Classic Melina on a dress size of 34. They're through the Hobson and Porter Terrace corners at 9 and 10, taking the longer route. Yeah, and it is so much longer that way. The quicker of the long routes is actually jumping and then turning right. Yeah, we saw the young boy do that, and it was much quicker, wasn't it? Connie Gill, movie star the second, coming to the last, and it looks like they are going to be inside the time, so that is a really good news for Great Britain for the future. She knows she's clear, she knows she's inside the time. Huge smile on Connie's face, two seconds inside the time. 34.2 is uh, their final score. They go into fourth place. What a brilliant round. She should be so proud of the way she's just ridden. I thought she rode with real maturity. Well, we understand that uh, our latest starter, who is uh, Lena Sorensen for Denmark with uh, Capone Burton. They've had a refusal at the white rails in the woods. Team rider for Denmark. Capone Burton picks up those 20 penalties with uh, Lena Sorensen. And a refusal now at the uh, rails. I don't think this is going to uh, end well. She's going to go the quick route again rather than that uh, safer, slightly safer. No, that is three refusals and elimination. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame and very disappointing for her and um, all her connections. Well, now we go back to Anna Schulter, Phil Houts, and Classic Molina. Jumping the Tracana at 17 onto the TES Home Care Limited Lake. Uh, with that black flag alternative down in the bottom of the bowl. There's lots of people down there at the water. It's great to see so many here supporting the Pony European Championships at Bishop Burton College. But a run out. Didn't look overly keen going down the hill to the first of those roll tops in the water. So she'll now have to take the longer route. Yeah, that just wasn't going to happen, was it? He was backing off from the, uh, from the water about five or six strides away and he just dropped behind her leg. So it was really, really difficult for her to make him jump in like that. So um, that was a good choice to go the long route after uh, her first run out. Well, out on course is our latest to start. Eleanor Datti and uh, Godo van het Puttenhof. And he just popped three strides in there from the rail to the drop down. So that's the first I've seen do that. Not many have done that, but he didn't get the best jump over the rail. So, so the drop down was a result of that. Well, Godo van het Puttenhof, Elena Datti on a dressage of 30 in ninth place after dressage. 
this could go into the lead if she's uh, clear inside the time. Well, about to go through the trees onto the FG Adamson and Sun White Rails at five. Here's Gerlio van het Puttenhoff and Eleanor Datti for Italy. So the uh, Italian rider just uh, gets the striding a little bit wrong. <coughs> Elena Datti, Gode van Hep Puttenhoff. Yeah, and that's a really big fence to, to make a mistake at. So, you know, it was, uh, she did, oh, sadly, sadly that wasn't going to happen. I think he, he remembered the fence before and he just uh, think he unnerved him slightly. probably remembered the fence at three, the rail before the step down. I think he started, maybe started losing confidence there. Yeah, well, let's just hope now that she can she can get him going again, so she can she can complete. You know, you can put that behind you now and carry on with the course. Really disappointing when that happens so early on. It's hard to ride ride with courage and, and confidence, but you know, hopefully she can get get it all back together and um, and complete the course. Yeah, and he's a really nice jumper, so. Let's just hope the next fence, she takes the long route here at the next fence and, um, and can, can move on. Well, that looks like, who is that going to be? That looks like it may be Lena Sorensen for Denmark and a Capone Burton having problems at the second last. Yeah, and it looks like Alina's actually um, improving her round now. She's taken the long route there at the uh, at the corners, which I think was a really sensible thing to do. I think it would have been a mistake to try and go direct there after she'd had a few uh, wobbles earlier on. She just needs to keep him really confident now and actually get some good jumps. Yeah, that was great. That'll look, that'll give him confidence. Well, actually, we're just learning information that Lena Sorensen for Denmark, Capone Burton, they had a refusal at those at rails at five. They had those two refusals which we saw at the rails. It was, in fact, Anna Schutt, uh, Filthout and Classic Molina that uh, had a fall at that fence, the penultimate fence. So apologies for connections. It wasn't Lena Sorensen. It was uh, Anna Schultz at Filthout and Classic Molina who fell at the second last for Germany, individual rider for Germany. Underway now is Alice Westermark for Sweden and uh, Knockbeg Flash. And she, another one that's had a refusal at five, the uh, FG Adamson Old Sun White Rails. Alice Westermark, knockback flash, and a dressage of 37.1, uh, but now those 20, 20 penalties makes it 57.1. Well, that expensive for Team Sweden. And another refusal. It's not Sweden's day. Already, the Swedish team have... Uh, Yeah, and it looks like Alina's actually growing in confidence now. She's she's giving him a good ride now. Th those mistakes that were made earlier on, she's put behind her and she's she's focusing on what's ahead. It's annoying because she could have gone into the lead with a clear, but having lots of trouble. And that is their third refusal out on course. And uh, elimination for Alice Westermark and Knockback Flash. Well, uh, next to start will be Harry Swan, team rider for Ireland, Wilderwood Storm, dressage of 36.2. There he is at the start. Harry Swan, Wilderwood Storm for Ireland, team member for Ireland. Then uh, it will be Great Britain, Saffron Osborne, Safi, riding Little Indian Feather, individual silver medalist from the 2017 European Championships. Harry Swan is away over the first. <coughs> so he jumps the Bishop Burton flower box and now on to two. 
Yeah, and it's nice to see these Irish riders going so well. It's uh, it's not always their strongest point in the dressage phase, so they uh, they do a great job when they start the jumping. Yeah, really nicely down that step. Harry Swan and Wilderwood Storm disappear through the trees. <laughs> We're just waiting for Harry to come to come up the hill over the uh, over the white rails. It's quite a long gallop up that hill, and it's quite steep as well. We don't see in the woods on the. Uh, on the camera, but um, it, it's quite a pull and, and they get to the top of this hill and they take a second breath and they pop over that fence and look at him, no problems. No, the Irish very good across the country, aren't they? Harry Swan and Wilderwood Storm come down to the first of the waters. The Bishop Burton flight pond out over the duck's nest. Yeah, nicely through that. Really economical jump there yeah it was and you know that's what you want you don't want them jumping massive over these fences when there's a big drop on landing you know that's that's when they lose their balance and end up having a having a nasty fall which uh, none of us want to see so Alina's nearly home she's taking the long route here which is really really sensible she's had those early run outs and you know, she just wants to get home now with no more penalties. And he's looking quite tired, so she's got to nurse him home over these next two fences. Yeah, one left to jump, and I think she'll be delighted. She'll be disappointed that she's had the mistakes that she's had, but um, to get this horse home, I, I credit to her because I wasn't sure it was going to happen so early on. Well, Harry Swan, Wilderwood Storm at the Dodson and Horrell picnic table at 11. Increases the pace again a little, and up to the two log piles, these cordwood stacks at 12A and 12B. Safi Osborne will be next to start for Great Britain. I just had a text from Safi saying, Spenny, you keep calling me Saffron Creswell on the live stream and not Safi Osborne. <laughs> Oops. So Safi Osborne is away from the stars. I, I did it the other day. I went to text Safi and I texted Safi, Safi, Saffron Creswell instead. I get very confused. It's my age. It must be. Apologies, uh, Safi. Well, Safi is away from the start. Safi Osborne, Little Indian Feather. Her third season riding Jojo. Won the British Championship last season. Won individual and team silver at last year's Europeans in Hungary. That in... Uh, in Hungary. Jojo originally a rescue pony from Ireland, so what a great job and a good save from the Irish. Yeah, wasn't it? He was good in his balance there. He was lucky he didn't um, have his weight in front of him and uh, and just topple off. He, he, he did well. It was well saved. Harry Swan, Willowwood Storm then disappear away from the road crossing. Yeah, and he looks quick. His time looks really quick. Safi Osborne coming uh, up through the trees, the white rails at five. Nicely through there. Well, Safi's uh, father, Jamie Osborne, racehorse trainer and mother, Katie, they're both here in support. I know full well that Jamie will be hiding somewhere. Goodness, that was a lucky moment. Yeah, she just made a little mistake, didn't she? But, you know, this is why we need these horses and ponies that think for themselves and actually help us out. So smart, isn't he? Incredibly smart. Harry Swan it is. And Wilderwood Storm jumping through the final water. And he's through and he's away. And look at him motor on up this hill. And again, you know, you, you can't appreciate how, how steep that hill is. Safi Osborne, Little Indian Feather. And she's gone the straight. Direct routes. Well done. Brilliant. She's meaning business, isn't she? Look at her. 
She's a very determined young lady. And quite rightly so. Look at the score she's on. You know, she could really, really make the leaderboard worry. Yeah, we've, you know, we lost our overnight leader. The uh, Germans are not doing uh, quite so well. They've got a number of Germans, uh, German team members coming in uh, quick succession in a, in a minute. But uh, it is all still to play for. Safi not only wants that individual title, but uh, would love to be in that team gold medal winning position as well. And they're, they're, it's even closer. It was wide open after dressage. We knew it wasn't going to be a, a dressage competition as uh, Harry Swan comes uh, towards home, taking the longer route at 21A, 21B, Wilderwood Storm. Yeah, and he's quick. Look how quick he is. You know, just watching Safi jump up the step there, I mean, that for me was the best of the day. She just rode that beautifully. That's something that the other riders should be watching and, and aspiring to. Yeah, brilliant, Harry. That was a classy round. Very, very good. And she just looks at her watch as she uh, presses on up the hill. Here comes Safi, she's just coming over the trachana here. And there she goes, she's not got many left to jump now. Yeah, down to this final water. The uh, TES Home Care Limited Lake gets the full stride in there. How pleased is she? She gives Little Indian Feather a huge pat for for the efforts at that water complex. Well, Safi Osborne coming towards home. Yeah, I think she's going to do it. I think she's going to make the time. But she has to go straight through these brushes. I think it's going to be easy. I don't know. I think she may play... Sa well, knowing Safi, she'll want to go straight. But she's got a minute to get home when she comes through the trees. I would think it will be <coughs> one minute. Yeah, one, one, one minute. minute. And so she is playing safe. Look, she's got yeah, loads of time to get home. Plenty of time. I think that's a very sensible bit of riding. She's given herself plenty of time to take this long route. You know, and we don't know what the orders were um, from the team, so she may have been uh, advised to do that. And she's easing up. Yeah, and that's really nice to see that she's not just galloping into the finish just, just for the sake of it. I think she's probably been one of the quickest of the day. She's delighted, absolutely over the moon, and, and so she should be. What a brilliant, brilliant round. Yeah, that uh, score clear inside the time, 6 minutes 27 seconds, has put her inside the... Uh, well, put, put her into gold medal winning position now. Will be, uh, at the moment, overnight leaders looking down the scores. There is uh, one coming in a second from Germany, 26.4. And then uh, the second last to go is Emily Roberg on 26.1. <laughs> well, really kicking across the country is Kirsty Snipbangers and Robin Hood. Yeah, she's using her legs. She's really meaning business coming up this hill. Gets quite tiring if you use your legs as much as that, so hopefully she uh, 
She won't need to carry on doing that, that, otherwise she'll be exhausted by the time she's home. Well, just about to come to five is uh, for France, Louise uh, Petitjean and Versailles de Morin. Oh, and a brilliant jump over those rails. Louise uh, Petitjean. Oh, and gosh, she uh, took a stride out there, wasn't she bold? Versailles de Morin is uh, absolutely flying in the early stages of this cross-country course. 3,500 metres with that optimum time, 6 minutes 44 seconds. We've seen a good deal of uh, competitors inside the time. Yeah, if she carries on at this speed, she'll be well inside the time. Christy Snepvangers and Robin Hood. Christy down to the second of the waters. beautifully through there. It's a shame we can't actually see the brush fence there. All it's we see is the tree. It, it's really frustrating, but we can hear the crowds. Rather, We don't really need to see that fence because we can hear the screams. They're just, uh, just on our left-hand side when they go down there. Well, getting quite close to the second of those corners was uh, Louise Petitjean and uh, Versailles de Morin. Yeah, I mean, how bold is this? I mean, he's just galloping away and and looking actually very, very good. He looks adjustable when she asks him to come back. He does. You know, that's great. That's what you want. You want to be able to move and be quick and actually then sit up and say, wait, and they, they really listen to you and they come back quickly. I'm hoping she's just going to balance him before this step up, not come too quickly. Well, out on course is one of those scores that could go to the top of the leaderboard. It is uh, Maxine Omela, Nutcracker 4. They've uh, jumped the first. Yeah, he was clever there with his legs. And that's what you want. Sometimes we make these mistakes and um, don't get there on the perfect stride. And your pony and your horse have got to help you out. Well, clear of two. They're going to three now. Clear of uh, two, going to three, is the German rider, Maxime Holloway. As uh, clear through the last to last uh, combination fence is uh, Christy Snepvangers and Robin Hood. That leaderboard then is Safi Osborne. Safi with the uh, little Indian feather, 28.0. In second, Sophia Rosel, Camillo WE, 30.1 for Germany. In third, it is at the moment for France... Guyton Cousineau and Pearl de Wadalanu on a score of 34.0. But all to play for and out on course is one of those that could go to the top of the leaderboard, Maxi Mumala and Nutcracker 4. They're uh, just about to jump the fifth fence now, having cleared the fourth. They've uh, jumped four and coming to the uh, white rails. Louise uh, Petitjean. Versailles de Morin approaching. Now, uh, in fact, where are they going to now? We are going down to the second of the waters, the TES Home Care Limited Lake. Yeah, easily on the three strides there on the turn. And through over the brush. Yeah, I think this one's gonna gonna go to the top of the leaderboard. This really could. Not on. Uh, she's on 33.3. She could go into uh, fourth place uh, potentially with a clear inside the time. So she'll be right up there. But uh, it'd be great to see our uh, German team member out there. She's uh, on that score of 26.4. But coming towards the final part of the course is Louise Petitjean. And Versailles de Morin. So through the trees, Louise Petitjean, Versailles de Morin at the penultimate fence, another one taking the longer route. Yeah, she's still got enough time to get home inside the time, though, hasn't she? Yeah, 
Yeah, she just checks her watch and she knows she's got a few seconds in hand. I think that was a brilliant round. She rode really, really well. And what a lovely, lovely French horse that is. Yeah, very nice. And the sign on the uh, the uh, house there said, Bishop Burton, Strogon Poland. Strogon Poland, the host of the 2019 European Championships. Maxime Omola. Well, that's the first we've seen of her. She's at 13A and 13B. Nutcracker 4 on 26.4. So the latest starter and just about to come up to the white rails at five is uh, now Louise Van Jeck and uh, Gazman B. Van Et Jukshot. Maxi Momola, Nutcracker 4, away from the road crossing. Yeah, and he just pecked on, uh, at, uh, on landing at the road crossing and she just sat up and gave him a pat. Well, and here uh, is uh, Louise Van Jeck and Gazman B. Van Et Jukshot. Oh, he's looking a bit green coming into the water there. She yeah, she knew that might happen. That's why I think she took the long route. So really sensible for doing She's that. She's lost a stirrup. She hasn't just lost it. It's gone. So she has no left stirrup. Oh, my goodness. Well, very good. I mean, Mark Todd did this many years ago around badminton, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, fingers crossed she'll be able to stay on board and uh, finish like Mark did. Well, I wonder when that happens, because we didn't see that on camera, but she uh, she's still got a right one. It's a red stirrup on the right, but she's got no left stirrup at all. Oh, bless her. That won't be much fun. And, you know, she's <laughs> she's going to be clinging on and hoping hoping she can stay in balance and just stay with him. The worst, uh, worst thing is she's she could go into third place inside the time on 31.0. Louise Van Jick and uh, Gasman B. Van Et Jukshot. Taking the long route at the two corners. Yeah, I mean, this is not easy for her at all. So, you know, fingers crossed she can get round. What a shame. You know, and it's really difficult then to, to keep up the speed that you need to get round inside the time if you have a little whoopsie like this. Yeah, she's just taking it steady now, isn't she? She just, uh, she's just trying to get him home. Yeah, it's a shame because I expect if she had to, so I think she's starting to hurt. Oh, she might have seen this video of Mark Todd. <laughs> I think. I, think I wonder if the actual stirrup has snapped off because I, she was looking down there. And I don't know whether she's trying to get her foot into the leather. You will see. I'm when not she, sure. When she jumps these two cordwood stacks we'll have a closer view maybe our camera can just pull in tight and have a have a little nosy mm. the, the, oh, the, leather, no, the leather has broken hasn't it the leather has broken yeah well thank you very much to our producer director for getting our cameraman to have a look in there but you can see there her leather has has broken well what a shame as you say Kate but she's still Right, really well. She is. She's doing a brilliant job. And th this will be painful tomorrow, that's for sure. Well, just going to the last is Maxine Momola, Nutcracker 4. The time. I'm not sure whether that is the correct time because I don't think she was that slow. That's nearly a minute over. She's punching the air. Well, she's happy no matter what happens. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Oh. Louise Van Jick and Gasman B. Van Et. No, this is an Irish person oh, going around here. Oh, that is Irish. Uh, that is our Irish starter. It is, in fact, uh, Sophie Foyle and Little Miss Fernhill. 32.1 dressage. You know, I think there's two Fernhill uh, ponies here, which is a, you know, brilliant, brilliant advert for Carol G. Uh, from the Fernhill stud in Ireland.
Well, the Irish rider riding for uh, individual honours, Sophie Foyle and Little Miss Fernhill. 32.1 dressage. Ninth place after dressage. Gosh, isn't she doing a good job? This just shows what brilliant balance she has. You know, she's in the centre of gravity, and uh, if she wasn't, she would have been on the floor by now. Well, in, according to our screen, Maxima Holma, the nutcracker for, picked up 22 time penalties. Beautifully through, uh, through the spirit level for the Fernhill horse. Oh, well done. Oh, sit no, up, sit no, up, sit no, up. No, 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 Oh, well oh, done, well, well done. She's done. just regained her balance. She's doing incredibly well. This poor girl, she's nearly home. <laughs> she's at fence 18. We're cheering her home. I think there's going to be an enormous cheer from the commentary box and from the uh, team. I don't know whether the commentary team here actually know that she's lost her stirrup, but she's getting clapped towards uh, home. And I know Lizzie Greenwood-Hughes has already uh, got her eye on talking to her. Everyone's cheering. Well, just, uh, just about to jump into the water. This is uh, Jonas de Vericor and uh, Vinok de Berda. 34.7 dressage. They're at the uh, red on the bank at seven. Drop down away from there and on to the Bishop Burton pencils. coming to the penultimate fence. This <laughs> girl has done so well. Louise Van Jick and Gasman B. Van Het Jukshot taking the longer route. I think she might get to the end and fall off. <laughs> well, I mean, hats off to her. I mean, oh, well, one more, just one more. She lost her stirrup at fence three. I know, I know. And how she has got round I do not know but you know this just shows what a brilliant round she's actually ridden and had she had a stirrup bless her she was probably would probably have been a bit more competitive you watch her connections cheer so the uh, Belgian writer she looks <laughs> quite pained doesn't she she does Poor she's gonna girl. hurt tomorrow that's for sure <laughs> Well, I know Lizzie's going to grab a word with her in a few seconds. We'll let her catch her breath, though, for a short while. There is Lizzie <laughs> running over to catch her. So our latest starter, no, we're not. We're back with uh, the French rider, Jonas uh, de Vericor, Vidoc de Berda. But our latest starter was uh, Eleonora de Sanctis with Fine and Smart van der langen -Uvel. Here is uh, Eleonora, but a refusal coming off the bank. Yeah, he doesn't want to play ball at all, does he? He's, he's got there and just said no. Well, Eleonora de Sanctis and Fine and Smart de Langanerval coming for a second attempt. Yeah, she just gives him a little tap there with her stick to just uh, make sure it doesn't happen a second time. You know, sometimes these ponies, you know, it's their first big championship and they haven't seen the crowds and there's so many people around the course now. Oh, now he looks like he's full of running. Well, Finally, Smart van der Langenuvel and Eleonora de Sanctis they gallop on away for Italy. Individual rider for Italy.
So the leaderboard is uh, Safi Osborne for Great Britain, Little Indian Feather 28.0. In second for Germany, Sophia Rosal and Camillo W.E. 30.1. In third for Ireland, Sophie Foyle and Little Miss Fernhill on 32.1. That a great score for them. And Louise Putijon and Versailles de More on a score of 33.3 .3 in fourth place. Not quite sure what happened to the score of the uh, German rider who uh, was on 26.4, Maxima Hummeler and Nutcracker 4. And we're just going to double check that because uh, she didn't look that slow across the country, but she's been given 22 time penalties. And um, we will just see whether that is correct. Yeah, and she just got a little bit deep there to the, uh, to the second cartridge. He just trotted in the water and just dropped behind her. So it was difficult then to actually get him to, to listen to her. But she did well to, to jump the fence and she's off again. And this French rider, I mean, gosh, he is, he is really speedy. And how classy has this pony looked? Uh, in fact, all the French today have looked very good. And uh, Eleonora just taking the long route here, which I think is sensible. She's she's not having the best round so far. He's just been a little bit green and a little bit like a rabbit in headlights whilst he started. But uh, hopefully she can get into it and get positively riding again. So Jonas is not going to quite make the time. He's just going to be over. But he's ridden brilliantly. And what a lovely, lovely pony this is. That was uh, that was a little bit quicker than I would like to have seen coming up the step, but he was careful and um, she's through it. <gasps> Hung a leg there at uh, at the first part of the water for this um, this young rider, this Danish ri Danish rider. Yeah, Astrid vibes, Golf Guards, and uh, Sarayko Fox. On a dress start at 36, uh, 37.1. Jump the Bishop Burton pencils at eight. And let's go over to Lizzie. Trip uh, felt, yeah. I was I was really panic in panic. So yeah. Have you ever jumped cross country without stirrups before? No, no. <laughs> so did you think I don't know how long I'm gonna do this? Did you did yeah. you feel? Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was scared to ever because the the water must come and. Yeah, it's, it was a difficult combination. And well, you had most of the course with only yeah. one stirrup. Yeah, yeah, I was really scared. <laughs> well, you just did amazingly. You had the biggest cheer of the day. We're, we just think you're the best. <laughs> and your pony, tell us about your pony. Yeah, he's, he's a good pony. He, he jumps always. He, he never stopped if it's, it's not Nordic. It's not necessary. It's not stop. necessary, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was like, OK, we don't need stirrups, yeah. just keep going. <laughs> yeah. 
he's a really good pony. Well so. done. You did your team proud, you did yeah. your country proud, and yeah. you did Bishop Burton College and the European Pony Championships proud. Well done. Yeah, I did it for the team. So we have the best team with uh, everyone. So, yeah. Good girl. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, down at the water, the uh, last of the waters is uh, Fine and Smart van der Langenerville and uh, Eleonora de Sanctis. They're on their way home. Not been the easiest of rounds for them. Started off quite green. They had those 20 penalties early on at fence three. <laughs> so just disappearing out of view and uh, up to the hay cut. at uh, 14. I think she's improved as she's gone around the course though, you know, she had the early, early stop and, um, and now she's, uh, she's galloping home. So just going up to the, that hanging flower rail now. Eleonora the Sanctis, just a couple of fences left to jump. Well, Camilla Luciani and Morland's Affair is our latest starter. 36.1 dressage, lying in 14th place after dressage. Again, a combination taking the longer routes down at the Hobson and Porter Terrace Corners at 9 and 10. Certainly been, I would say, 50-50. Yeah, and that, that long route actually has jumped well. You know, jumping the first part and turning right. Yeah, Camilla Luciani and uh, Morland's affair. Oh, gosh, living dangerously there. He took a stride out, but gosh, wasn't he, wasn't he careful? You saw his legs come out and uh, he cleared the fence and he's away again. They need to help us out every now and again. Yeah, they sure do. And um, I, think, <laughs> I think he was just, I think there was probably another stride in there. But he's got loads of scope, so actually, she's she's playing uh, she's playing a game that he can play. And let's just see a balance him here. Just get him back. Yeah, quick and careful, and uh, she's away again. Well, you we have got another starter on course there, clear of the first two fences. This is for Sweden. Elvira Gustafsson and Royal Gold Apollo for Sweden. Swedish team member. Sweden not had the best of days. They've had two riders eliminated. This is uh, Elvira Gustafsson, Royal Gold Apollo on a dress size of 42.0. But just uh, making their way home. This is Astrid Vibes Govgard and Sirico Fox. Yeah, we didn't see much of their round, but... Um She's obviously uh, gone well because she's she's happy and uh, she's home. Well, they just had 9.6 time penalties go uh, down the leaderboard. Well, coming uh, up through the woods to the white rails at five, the FG Adamson and Sun white rails at five and uh, clearing those in uh, good style is uh, Elvira Gustafsson and Royal Gold Apollo. 39th to go of the 45 competitors. So we're coming towards the end of this cross-country phase. Yeah, and she was uh, she was speedy through the water. She went through that distance on five strides and most people have gone through on the six. Dropping downhill towards the second of the waters. This looks like a 16 too. Yeah, doesn't it, Justin? <laughs> Actually, he's, he's got a massive stride for, for his size. A reminder, if you're watching and you've already you've just tuned in, these are 14 two maximum, these ponies. This is the Pony European Championships. You're not watching the senior Europeans. Camilla Luciani and Moulin Zafer, they go up the hill towards the hay cart. They're very nearly at the end of the course. 
And it's so nice to see them um, full of running when they uh, are coming up that steep hill coming home because, you know, it's been a tough course and it's very undulating and uh, the weather is warm. It is very warm actually out there. Looks like this pony just takes control a little bit on the last stride and he just, uh, I'm not really sure who's who's in charge here, but um, she's clear and she's she's heading home. So the uh, latest starter for Ireland in the team is Chloe Fagan with Fernhill Timbuktu. Fernhill Timbuktu with a dress size of 29.2. 29.2. Good go into second place uh, with a good round and clear inside the time. Very quick through three. He's sticking his tongue out. Yeah, he is and uh, doesn't seem to be stopping him running, does it? What a lovely stride he has. <laughs> The only thing is when they do stick their tongues out like that, sometimes they can just bite the end of them and um, draw a little bit of blood. So uh, let's hope he doesn't do that and he keeps the tongue in his mouth as, as much as possible. So the leaderboard then, it is still Safi Osborne for Great Britain, Little Indian Feather at the top of the leaderboard, 28.0. In second place for Germany is Sophia Rosal and Camillo WE on 30.1. Third for Ireland, Sophie Foyle. Little Miss Fernhill, clear inside the time. They go into third, 32.1. In fourth place on 33.3 .3 is uh, Louisa Petitjean and Versailles de More on 33.3. .3. Fourth place for them. Well, this uh, Irish combination down to the water, an enormous jump into the water. So bold, oh my goodness. Fernhill, Tim back to Chloe Fagan. Now the hanging rail, still just sticking his tongue out. Look how brave he is. Gosh, isn't he super? You know, and watching these ponies go around, I know we've said this before, but goodness me, don't they love their job? Absolutely. Well, uh, Royal Gold Apollo and Elvira Gustafsson coming down to the second of the waters. Different line this time. Yeah, she, the she jumped the first part on the angle to make a much straighter line. You know, maybe she's had problems with him in the past of, of possibly ducking out or perhaps he's not so easy to turn. And, and um, I think she rode that really well, knowing how, how her pony goes. Well, next to start will be for Great Britain. Great Britain's Daisy Proctor and Holiday Chase. Coming towards home, it is uh, Royal Gold Apollo, Elvira Gustafsson, 45 seconds to get home now. And here goes Daisy. Yeah, Holiday Chase, third season eventing with this uh, combination, 14 year old gilding, only double clear at uh, Radapa in uh, 2017. Third at Brown Hall in the uh, final trial. Chloe Fagan, Fernhill, Tim back to. And Chloe really trusted her pony there. He, she just kept coming to the step up and um, wasn't he fabulous? He was so careful through there and off she goes again. Daisy Proctor, Holiday Chase, quickly down the step at three. 31.4 could put them into provisional third place and over the last is a great gusto it is Royal Gold Apollo and Elvira Gustafsson they pick up 4.4 time penalties complete on 46.4 just 11 seconds over the time 6 minutes 55 seconds we're waiting to come through the woods and up to the white rails at five. Daisy Proctor, Holiday Chase team member for Great Britain. Great Britain currently sitting in uh, gold medal position at the moment, but only 0.3 behind is the team from France. Remember, France are the uh, reigning 
European champions from uh, Kapsabar in Hungary last year. Oh, and Daisy rode really nicely through there. And he's full of running. He is just looking so brave and he just loves his job. And she didn't get there quite on the stride she wanted and he was clever and he just backed himself off and chipped a small stride in and uh, off she goes again. Chloe Fagan very f quickly through the water. Fernhill, Timback 2, they disappear. Looks like Daisy went straight there. She uh, She's riding really well. She's up and over the next fence and, and heading on, looking really positive. Yeah, uphill now to 12A, 12B, these two uh, cordwood stacks. The first day is turning left-handed to the second of the corner. It gets very close. My goodness me, she was lucky there. Yeah, but he used his scope and he jumped her out of trouble and off she goes again. So the last team rider for Great Britain. The last uh, few team riders now coming forwards. We'll get, then get some provisional team results. Very neatly up the uh, step and yeah. uh, spirit level. Wasn't he? And she was brave, and she just kept coming. And she knows, she knows her pony. So just finishing, Chloe Fagan, Fernhill, Tim back two clear inside the time. They finish on 29.2 and go into second place behind Great Britain's Safi Osborne and Little Indian Feather on 28.0. So it's a all change in the leaderboard again. Daisy Proctor, Holiday Chase. They're continuing to go very well across the country. This 16-year-old, uh, they're all in their last year. So uh, making the most of their time out there. They're in gold at the moment. They've got that final horse inspection in the morning and then they uh, show jump in the afternoon. Well, Daisy Proctor at the uh, road crossing and the Bedmax uh, Beach Log. Down to the water they go. They've cleared the Rainbow Equine Hospital Tracaner at 17. Onto the TES Home Care Limited Lake at 18 ABC. Holiday Chase still looking full of running. He's actually seemed to have picked up the pace a little bit now. They started, a, started I thought, a little bit lethargically, but they've certainly picked up the pace now. Yeah, she's probably... Uh She's probably realised that she hasn't got time to hang around now, so she's really got to keep moving forward all the time and be really positive at all of these fences. Yeah, one minute 25 now to get home. She's got uh, a number of fences still to jump as they come to the hay cart. That hay cart at fence 19. Then they go uh, through the trees and jump the Aspeo equestrian hanging flower tray at 20. Remember Safi Osborne was out of the woods with one minute to spare. If she can jump out of the woods, and I think we, we've clocked it, that if they're there in 40 seconds and take the long route, they're okay and inside the time. Yeah, I'm not sure she's going to quite be there, but uh, she's certainly going to be very close. It'll be interesting. No, no, she needs she to, might. Uh, she might just, she, she needs might. to be here 40 seconds, I think. If that clock could go back up, then uh, we might be able to see. But typically it goes down and disappears just as we need it. Yeah, I mean, if she'd taken the straight route here, she would definitely have been inside the time. But I think she's just going to be... She's just got to keep moving and uh, not waste any time at all here. No, she needs to make this tight very economical. She might just do it, you know. And she needs to do it for the team. Come on, Daisy. 
Don't take a pull. Just keep travelling. Ten seconds. Nine. Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be nip and tuck. I don't think she's quite going to make it. She's going to be a couple of seconds over. And she is one, two, two seconds over. So uh, 0.8 of a time penalty. Daisy Proctor goes on to 32.2 into fifth place. Yeah, I mean, that was a brilliantly judged round. I mean, such a shame she was just over the time. But, um, you know, happy days. I think uh, they'll all be very, very pleased. And you can see everybody there washing off their ponies and uh, looking after them. It's great to see. Here is uh, Britt van uh, Rysvik with the uh, Orchids Tiger Sun. Well, now we uh, catch up with uh, Lisa Guajaltieri with uh, Omar du Casidal for France, 29.2. France currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard. The, the leaderboard now changed because Great Britain have had their last rider. France are in gold on 96.5 going into this competition. France were in bronze after dressage, but uh, it is all changed because they've only added uh, one to their score 96.5 97.5 behind is great britain in bronze 99.5 is ireland ireland were in fourth going in to the cross country germany were out in front 77.1 but germany now on 116.2 dropped down from gold into fourth Well, still, we have uh, one for France. Well, one for France. We're out there. We've, we're on, eyes on. Lisa Guajaltieri and uh, Omar Duquea Sadal. Emily Roberg will be next out, lying in second place on 26.1. She could take the lead. She could then put Germany right back in the running as Lisa Guajaltieri and Omar Duquea Sadal gallops on to the two log piles. Well, this is now the uh, German combination, Emily Roberg and Sandro 406, 26.1 dressage, lying in second place. They're at the second fence. So we've just got one left to go. You know, and this is a really important round for this French rider. She's just got to keep traveling. She's got to keep moving. She's taken one long route already, which jumped really well, but she can't afford to take too many more. Lisa Gualtieri and Omar Ducasidal may gallop away from the spirit level bounce onto the basics table, but it looks like trouble, is it? Or is it a long route? No, we've managed to um, scramble over the first element and uh, I think I think we're a bit confused. I'm not really sure what's happened there. I, I think she's jumped the first, but now she's crossed a track, so I'm she's confusing me, so I'm not I'm not really sure what's going on. So, Britt van uh, Rijsevic and Orchids Tiger Sun. Mm, I don't know what's happened there. Mm, getting a big smack. But uh, going very quickly across the country, Lisa Guajaltieri and uh, Omar du Casadal. She's on 29.2. She could go into uh, second or third, depending on how close she is to the optimum time. Was she just approaching the water there? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the little reminder on the bottom was just to say, come on, the water's coming up. This is a serious fence and you must jump through it. Not the most confident jump over the... Uh, not uh, the most confident jump at the shotgun. But we understand that Britt van Weisvik and Orchids Tiger Sun, they've retired at the penultimate fence, just walking off course. Not sure what happened up there. We just caught the tail end of no, it. No, I saw I saw him uh, jump uh, the A element and uh, sort of la land in it slightly, and she turned left and then sort of seemed to get in a bit of a pickle. So I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, she walks home and um, there's always another day. Well, Lisa Gualtieri down at the second water. Kind of a wobble line. There is wiggle room in there, but uh, she jumps it. Omar du Kersenal. Now goes uh, 
flat out like a train up the hill. So a minute and five to get home now. Up through the tapes into the wood, up to the hay carts at 19. She knows that she needs to be inside the time. France defending champions. This score of 29.2 will certainly help their score. Yeah, and she means business, doesn't she? She's not hanging around. She has to get home now. And she's aiming to get inside the time. Well, there is Emily Roberg and Sandro 406 at the two cord wood stacks. On to the bounce at 13A, 13B. Clever, nimble. Taking the longer route. Lisa Gualtieri and Omar Ducasidal. She's going to pick up time. That is for sure. She's got four seconds to get home. Yeah, she's just not going to do it. Not quite. Not quite. This is going to be an expensive round, just getting those time faults, which will be a bit disappointing, but she's home and she's clear. Well, 10 seconds over four time penalties for France. So the uh, French rider, Lisa Gualtieri, Omar du Casadal, goes into sixth place on 33.2. That uh, puts France on 100.5, drops them down from gold back into bronze, just with those four time penalties. Oh, what a big drop, and um, there'll be some disappointment there, I'm afraid. Well, do you think four time penalties has dropped them from gold into bronze? You think about the show jumping tomorrow, one pole down, and it could all change again because there's not a pole between the top three teams. Well, that's why the... Uh the show jumping is so influ influential on the final day. You've got to have good jumpers. And, um, you know, we've got to get them through the trot up next. Never mind think about the jumping. Absolutely. Emily Roberg there, Sandro 406, coming towards home. They've jumped the trichina out of the woods. And we've got our last uh, on course. And they're on a score of uh, 39.1. They're clear of the first eight fences. Baptiste de Batillon and uh, Hadgar. But we turn our attention back to Sandro 406, Emily Roberg, at the second of the waters. And he was so clever there. He just broke into trot and she turned him and he just popped through the, the, the final element and uh, she's away again. I think the time's going to be tight for her. One minute 17. She needs to be coming out of the trees at 40 seconds out of the wood at the uh, back into the home start finish field i don't think she's, she's going to make it she's not going to do it no well 26.1 she can afford to have a couple of time faults jumping the hay cart at 19 and uh, on to the espere question hanging flower tray she needs to be leaving the wood at 40. She's not even gone into the wood yet and she I think will take I think she'll take that longer route. Well if she takes that longer route you know then the time penalties are going to happen. If she goes straight she might just get there. But do you risk the chance of a run out? Well no she's, she's going not going the long to. Route. I thought she might Emily Roberg, Sandro 406, they're going to pick up a handful of time faults. She's not going to be in the lead, I do not think, after the cross country. She was that leader after the second after the dressage. It says first there, but that's because we lost the uh, leader after dressage. She was, in fact, second after dressage on 26.1. She's already 10 seconds over the time now. Jumps the last. She's dropping down that leaderboard. Emily Roberg stops the clock with uh, 16 seconds over. 6.4 time penalties, 32.5. And that takes her into sixth place. Drops her down four places. Safi Osborne still in the lead on 28.0. This is the last to go, though. Baptiste Batillon for Belgium. The uh, team member, 39.1, Hadgar. 
Well, Belgium, the last to go. Well, I can confirm now that Great Britain will be overnight in overnight gold on 97. In silver, it is Ireland, 99.5. In uh, France, is in, in bronze on 100.5. The individual results, it's Safi Osborne, Great Britain, 28.0. Chloe Fagan, Ireland, in uh, silver, 29.2. Sophia Rosal in uh, bronze, 30.1. In fourth, Sophie Foyle for Ireland. Ireland with two in the top four. Little Miss Fernhill on 32.1. That's the top four in the leaderboard so far. We'll run down further a little bit later on. But the top four teams cannot move with Belgium. But uh, because this score will not affect the uh, overall. It is Great Britain, Ireland and France battling it out for that uh, gold medal tomorrow in the show jumping phase. And not one fence separates the top four. Well, problems, unfortunately. It's 20 penalties for Baptiste Bertillon and uh, Hadgar. They've uh, already picked up 20 penalties earlier on. It's 40 jumping in total. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. He just got a little bit long coming into the first part of the water, lost control on landing, and he just couldn't make that turn. Very, very annoying. Well, coming back for the longer route, I think, they're uh, coming back. Are they, are they retiring? Well, Baptiste Petillon. I think he may well. Hmm. Is he retiring? No, he's going to... What's he going to do? I think he's trotting home by the looks of it. So the... Uh, the... He was, in fact, eliminated, Baptiste Bertillon, for Belgium and uh, Hagar. So that will add a 1,000 points to uh, Belgium. If they don't have a complete completion, a competitor doesn't complete, they have a 1,000 points. So they go on to a 1,000. The team result, then, it is Great Britain out in front, 97. Ireland in silver, 99.5. France in the bronze medal position, 100.5. Not one fence not one show jump fence separating the top three. It will be a really exciting climax to this team competition tomorrow for the FEI Pony European Championship 2018 here at Bishop Burton College. Germany in fourth. They were in the lead after dressage on that very good score of 77.1. They dropped down into fourth place now on 122.6. Italy in fifth. Belgium sixth. Denmark seven. Netherlands eight. And Sweden in ninth place. The individual standings, it's uh, very exciting for Great Britain. Not only do they sit in gold medal in the team standings, but in the individual standings, it is Safi Osborne. Safi on a score of 28.0. In second, it is uh, Chloe Fagan, Fernhill Timback 2 on a score of 29.2. Sophia Rosal and Camillo Wee on 30.1 in third. They're the gold, silver, bronze. And again, not a fence separating the top three. In fourth place, Sophie Foyle, Little Miss Fernhill for Ireland, 32.1. Daisy Proctor, Great Britain in fifth. Emily Roberg for Germany in sixth. Lisa Guhalteri for France, seventh. Lucy Petitjean in eighth for France. France also ninth with... Uh, with uh, Guyton uh, Cousineau, the uh, lovely little horse, uh, Pele de bois de in uh, ninth on 34. And Isabel Comerford for Ireland, Colour Me Fancy, 10th on 34.1. There your gold, silver and bronze overnight. Remember, horse inspection in the morning and then show jump in the afternoon. Well, thank you very much for joining us here in uh, the park here at Bishop Burton College for the 2018 FEI Pony European Championships. It's been a really, really exciting time. Kate, you've had a great time. Your first time doing the uh, live stream. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me. It's been a great competition and um, I'm looking forward to watching tomorrow. It should be a good competition tomorrow. It is uh, nine o'clock live stream for the individual show jumping. We then we'll bring you all the details. You can find out all the details actually on the Bishop Burton Equine website. You can find all of the start lists and the results there. But uh, pretty much from all, us all here at Bishop Burton College in the sunshine. And uh, we're actually, 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 we do have the, the individual leader 
Saffron Osborne, Safi Osborne, and uh, Lizzie, if you can hear me, just apologise to Safi. She'll know what I'm saying. Just says Spencer says sorry, and uh, she'll understand. <laughs> and um, let's. Uh, and we're handing over to Lizzie. He says sorry. I don't know why. Why would Spencer Sturmey be saying sorry to you, Safi, when you're in the gold medal position? <laughs> he was calling me Saffron Creswell during <laughs> during <laughs> the preview of the cross country. So maybe. Oh, <laughs> I see. What, well, what would you like to say back to, to Spencer? I th thanks, Benny. It's very nice. Thanks. Nice to know you remembered me. <laughs> well, look, Safi, as I said, you are in the gold medal position. Obviously, you've already won an individual last year, silver medal on this wonderful pony oh, yeah. did it feel as good and as fast as it looked oh yeah she's just she's absolutely incredible I went out with there with so much confidence that I had the right pony underneath me really I just got to thank the owners who bought her for me so so much and yeah she's just unbelievable she's one of a kind really so there was one slightly hairy moment I think was that fence seven it was <laughs> yeah. talk us through it <laughs> I just thought I was like I'll just and then I saw I was on a bit of a miss I was like oh god come on Jojo but no she picked up so nicely for me and yeah she just really got me out of the out of the bottom so I was so happy with her and not only are you in gold as an individual but Britain is in the gold medal as a team yeah that's the main thing really like to get those good scores home for the team and like to try and do our sponsors Charles Owen proud was really the main thing because they put so much into it and our team coaches and our chef to keep and all our selectors put so much into it during the season and like to try and get a medal a gold medal for them like this tomorrow would be incredible but tomorrow's another day really so. how is the pony feeling oh great she came home full of running she just she just eats it all up really she's She's just incredible. And what now? Will she get wrapped up overnight? Oh, yeah, we'll ice her legs a few times and just get her in the best possible shape for tomorrow morning, really, because it's two more phases, really, not just one. Well, yeah, obviously you've got to get yeah. past the vets inspection. Well, good luck for that. And, and her show jumping's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, yeah, she's a solid show jumper, fingers crossed, touch wood. Um, and hopefully we can just we can pull it out of the bag. OK, well, you can get your own back on Spencer now. We'll call him. What should we call him? I don't know, he calls me Titch most of the time, so I don't really know what to call him. <laughs> All right, well, well done you, Spencer. I'm going to leave it back to you just to uh, say goodbye to everyone here from Bishop Burton and the Pony Europeans eventing Cross Country Day. Yeah, thank you very much, Lizzie, and great uh, to speak to Safi. Safi Osborne. So, Safi, very gracious, and she's, she's absolutely right, talking about the uh, sponsors to Charles Owen to uh, Charles Owen and uh, also to the owners and all the supporters. There's such a great support network. Well, uh, join us tomorrow. Nine o'clock is the individual show jumping. We then have the uh, final phase of the eventing, the show jumping. All the details, as I said, are on the, uh, British, the, the Bishop Burton Equine webpage. Do check that out for the results and the start list. But from us all here at Bishop Burton College for the uh, Pony FEI European Championship 2018, it's good night and we'll see you tomorrow.